Yeah. Ready. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, you seemed exasperated already. I was. It was a lot of effort to push the Look how shiny my head as well. I know. I need some I'm powder. Very... We need makeup. 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 Hello. Damn it. <laughs> Welcome not to. Here. No, they left. Two needles at the ready. I'm Kevin. I'm Ray. We are coming to you from Stratford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. This is our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, um, yarn dyeing, yarn buying, and all those other fun things. So welcome. This is episode 86, mm -hmm. and today is Saturday, May 13th. It's not the 12th? No. Oh, it's the 13th, because you said, ooh. I said, oh! Up! Opa! Opa. <laughs> Great. Here's what I found. No, weird. <laughs> what a shit show already. So Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Okay. Thank you for joining us on this fine Saturday. <clears throat> Maybe that's why, because we recorded the last two podcasts on a Sunday, didn't we? Last time, I don't think the one before me. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the one I before I think they were both too. on Sundays. Yeah. Now we're back to a Saturday. We are. And we're all sorts of screwed up. I what fell? Um, some of the thingamajiggers. Oh, uh, our Geo guys. That's okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So, well... That's how it goes. Today's going to be... I don't know. I don't either. Happening. But today... To, sh, I don't know. We just got back from a trip. I don't know who we think we are. We've got lots of um, trips planned. And um, we're kind of in the middle of our circuit. Yeah. I guess. Much. We just got back from Maryland Sheep and Wool last weekend. We will talk about that uh, towards the end of the episode. We don't have much knitting to share Really? Yeah, I only worked on two projects, and I worked on three. So we'll show those. We'll share all that, and then we'll um, we'll really we'll talk at length about our um, our trip to Maryland. We we did like technically three. Amongst, we'll we'll call them events, right? Three functions. Yeah, yeah. We went to three, three stops. Things. We made That's three right. stops while we were in Maryland. That's, That's right. right. Um. So anyway, besides that, what have we been up to? So let's see. Uh, Let's work backwards. We got our hairs cut this morning. We did. We already went and got our hair cut this morning. My shine has gone away a little bit. Maybe I just need to keep massaging my forehead. Um, let's see. What else? I Thursday night, I went out to dinner with some old co-workers. You did. So that was nice. We're, I think we're going to try to make it like a monthly thing, which will be nice. Um, then Wednesday night, we went to an award dinner where you won an award for excellence in nursing. Thanks. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. That was, yeah, a it was good, nice. like a three hour, like little cocktail hour dinner award presentation. I wore um, a three piece suit. I wore a suit. Yeah. Not three pieces. Nope. You had two pieces. I had two pieces. But it was good. Um, we took lots of pictures. Uh, it was, yeah, it was nice. It was a, a really great event at one of the, at the, one of the Marriott's here. They have like a really large ballroom. So they had a nice, uh, nice dinner. Award ceremony it was like two hours, two and a half hours. Three hours. Like it started five to eight. Oh, it was till eight. Yeah, we left at eight. Wow. Yeah. I'm all discombobulated because the sun is setting so much later now. Yeah. That like you sure. usually gauge things by when it's dark outside and it's still kind of light a little bit at eight o'clock. Um, yeah, so that was nice. Um, it was, uh, I hate. I hate getting things. I like... I hate I'm, recognition. Yeah, It's I like, like an uncomfortable for thing sure. to like be up in front of people. Yeah. To be recognized. It's Speaking not. of recognitions, I might be put on a billboard. Oh, you are being put up. Maybe. It's another uncomfortable situation. More to come on that. Um, what else? I've been doing a lot of yard work. I've been cutting down trees and stuff. Yeah. Without a chainsaw, mind I you. I know. But a we're going to probably use it today. And First, when we do, we'll have to take pictures. Yes. We promise the people pictures, maybe a video. Um, I'll wear my chaps. Okay. And then we went to Maryland Sheep and Wool. We were left on Friday, came home on Sunday. Yeah. Too short of a, of a trip. It was. It was not. In retrospect. It was not planned well no. by us. Uh, right. But, but also, we tried to fit it in because it was kind of like a last, not last minute, but almost last minute. Like it wasn't in our original plan for plan, the year. Right. Um. And I had just finished school. So, like, that was the last week of classes for me um, for this semester. And there was a pretty big project, like, group project that needed to be done. And so I was, you know, it was due this, that Sunday that we came back. Right. But um, that's finished. I got an A in the class. Good job. So I currently have a 4.0 GPA after two classes. Very good. Yep. So my next class doesn't start till the 22nd of this month which is great so we get a little bit of a break 
And which is perfect because we'll be in Montreal. We will. Uh, and then I think that's pretty much it. The week before was just kind of like preparing to leave. So we didn't do much the the week after. No, I got sick. Yeah, you had a bit of a cold that like Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. Allergies have been terrible. My allergies have been absolutely yes, terrible. I'm like, at warning, I may get up and have to blow my schnoz at some point today, but... Um, I've medicated with my normal allergy medicine, plus I took some additional medication yeah. as well. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that was, I, I got nervous. I tested co- for COVID. It was negative. Thank goodness. Um, speaking of, all of our restrictions, at least in Connecticut, have been removed. So now your job is back the to maskless. Emer- the the uh, state of emergency is lifted. Yeah. So yeah, so it's weird. It's been three years since we've had to wear masks in the hospital, and now they're optional. Uh, unless you're giving patient care in a patient room. But um, yeah, it's interesting to like walk in the hallways and not see my staff in in masks. You know, I always joke that like when I started there, I w- I've been there for three years. When I started there the second day, my second day, we went to mask requirements. So I always joke that I don't really know what my staff look like. Well, I so, mean, it's true. Yeah. It's a good point. But um, and I think that's really it for the last, you know, two weeks. It's been busy. Busy. But... At the same time, I feel like not a lot's happened, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. We've done, I think we talked about it the last uh, podcast. We're continuing our walks. We've been doing two and a half miles a day, which is really nice. Yeah, it's been lovely because we've, I don't know that we've talked about it. Like we both have kind of been on a weird fitness journey where we go in and out of being consistent. Right. But pretty much since like, I want to say March. We've been pretty consistent, like getting in some strength training. And now we've been throwing in the two and a half mile walk every day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it's raining, obviously we can't. So if we that can. That only happened to us twice, maybe. Maybe. If we can, we get it in. If like there's a time constraint, then we cut it down to like a mile and a half. But we've really been trying to do that, which has been lovely. It's mm-hmm. really, really nice. And you can already see, like we were talking about it yesterday, one of the streets that we walk is all incline um and that's getting easier for us to do yeah we're not as winded by the time we get to the top of the <laughs> we were, we joke because like once we get to that right before that street we're like okay here we go yeah Ooh. here it comes it's a pretty steep incline mm-hmm. you know um, but it's nice it's nice to get yeah. outside and do that and mm-hmm. you know it doesn't take long it's... no it's like 46 minutes or something like that 42 minutes yeah it's not a long walk so and it's nice because our our apple watches um like keep track of our like a lot of the different things. So we, you know, when we hit a mile marker, we're like, okay, is that slower or faster than yesterday? Yeah. And we've been seeing like an increase, which is really, that's an really improvement. Nice. It's yeah. motivating. Um, so I think that's all that. The only ad mini thing we have is we still have our spring cleaning mal and that yes. ends at the end of the month. Yes. And then next month, I forget when we kick it off is let's hear it for the boys. Already? Yeah. It'll be wow. the third year. It'll be the third. I think it'll be our third year, fourth year. No, third year, because yeah. that, we started the channel in 2020. Okay. So, you know, we wanted to get some I know things. Some Maybe we'll have to work on something. I know. I wanted to get like... We wanted to get like a logo designed like for Let's Hear It for the, for the boys, boys. And do and, like a tote or something. Yeah. Or like pins or something like that. Yeah. So I don't... Maybe... We'll we have can, to look into that. Because I don't know when we started. Do we start it like Father's Day weekend? Or do we start at January? I'm going to have to look at old episodes. I don't know when they start, typically. Let's do a contest. For what? For some of our artistic friends out there to design us uh, Let's Hear It for the Boys There logo. we go. And then whichever logo we pick will win a prize. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So if you're artsy and you would like to design a logo for the Let's Hear It for the Boys niddle, or Mal. Make along, yep. Mal, please... Use our email address below. And submit your things. How fun is that? That's a good time. Yeah. And then Smart. we'll... Smart. Thanks. It just popped into my dome piece. <laughs> Must be all the neurons firing from all the exercise we've been doing. All right. And yeah. other than that, I think that's it. We'll jump into some knitting. And so it'll be really chatty at the end. We'll talk about Maryland Sheep and Wool. We'll no, show... We're chatty throughout the entire I know thing. that, but... It'll then be we'll... on overdrive at the end. Yeah. We'll talk about um, our weekend there, what we did, what we bought, which... Is a decent amount. It's not awful, but it's a good amount of stuff. What is awful? Hmm. We and need more yarn. La- actually, last thing. I think thing... we need to get another shelf. No. 
Yeah. Oh, wait. What? The big announcement. Well, two things. First, next weekend, we will be in Montreal for oh, Knit City Montreal. Thank you. Yes. So if you see us, please say hi. Um, it's our we- favorite part of these events is yeah. meeting everybody and, and being able to chat. And I think it's, we'll talk more about Maryland, but it was, we had much more opportunities to like chat for longer periods of time. Yeah, um, it was very nice. With all of you. It was great. Um, so if you see us, say hello. We'll be there. We're actually making a, a little bit of a vacation. We're getting yeah. there Thursday next week and we're staying. We haven't decided. I think we're either leaving the following Wednesday or Thursday. Mm-hmm. So if you see us, say hi. And um, the only thing we know that we are not doing is the knit night. It's sold out. Yeah. So that's not something um, that we will be doing. I know a couple people have asked us. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then the big news is that it has happened and I have ordered an Urbacher circular sock knitting machine in a, cus- in a custom color. It's called Husky Blue. It's a nice deep blue. It's going to be glossy and shiny and brilliant. Um, and again, we'll just kind of talk more about that. So the only thing I will say is if you've ever considered it and you'd like one, I know currently their wait time is 16 to 18 weeks. Yeah, that's a long time. So uh, you have some time to like order if you call them and order. I don't believe you have to pay until it ships. So it gives you some time to kind of budget. If you order from the website, you are required to pay on the website at the time of the order. So that's my little tidbit. I got that. And a lot of you had actually recommended some other circular sock machines. Thank you for that. Um, what was one? Bean and... So it's Dean and... I think it's like Dean, Dean and Bean. And Bean. They're, They're like... There's a lot of 3D printed ones yes. out there, which are actually really, really cool. Yeah, we've we've really had our eye on. We did, and this it was chatting with Aquila, um, who is a lefty knitter. She also is has amazing. a we'll lefty talk knitter. More, way more about her. In we a will. Bit. Um, but hearing her actually not even talking to us, but talking to other people when we mm-hmm. first walked up, it was kind of the thing that sealed the deal on the Earlbacher. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was the other big news. So I'm excited for that, and let's get into some knitting. Okay. I do not have any FOs. I have two whips and a. Future whip, which I left the yarn downstairs. Um, so I'll get that. But what do you have? I have three whips. Okay, so you can start and I'll get the yarn. And I only, I don't have any FOs. Um, yeah, we really didn't have much knitting time over the past couple of weeks, to be honest with you. But I will start by, let's see, what shall I start with? So you saw, let's start with this one. You saw this. Um, last time, I believe I had cast this on, and this was, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where I, I kind of had uh, delusions of grandeur that we would have all this knitting time while we're hanging out with uh, friends and stuff over at, in Maryland, but it just didn't. It's really never the case. It's not. I, we just talked too much. I, I thought even at Rhinebeck when we were, you know, this past year with the house, I didn't knit nearly as much as no. I thought. I would like... I know. I know. It's weird. But it's fine. Yes. I, I mean, it's it's all good. You all understand. You know. So this is the um, sock sample that I am knitting up with Kevin's yarn. This is in his 80-20 base. The colorway is Frozen Grasshopper. Kevin's got butterfingers. I don't know if I have any more in the shop. Let's look. Okay. This is called Frozen Grasshopper. And I showed you last time how it was knitting up with a really cool, like, micro striping um and some pooling in there as well so i did a one by one twisted rib i did a german twisted cast on i cast this on and knit the leg of the sock in nine inch circular needles and i just uh i just knit the heel flap and did the heel turn last night so i just need to now pick up and and do the gusset decreases this um, this is just like my vanilla sock recipe. I do 72 stitches. Um, I did 20 rows, I believe, of the twisted rib. And uh, I use a 2.25 millimeter needle or a US-1. And what I'm doing for the heel is I'm using the Alacrity pattern by um, Denise, Earth Tones Girl. She just released that pattern. I showed you the socks in the last podcast. It's been all over Instagram. I'm I'm really, really proud of her. I'm really excited that you guys can start knitting this. And I'll link to the pattern down below. So the cool thing about the pattern 
in the um, Alacrity socks is that it's a Dutch heel, so it's a square heel, and there's two different options, which um, is really cool. You can do a garter stitch heel flap and gusset and a garter stitch toe, or you can do a uh, traditional stockinette or a slip stitch um, heel flap, I believe, or just a traditional stockinette heel flap um, and heel turn. So I combined them. I did the garter stitch heel flap, and then I did the stockinette heel turn. Oh, nice. So this will be on the bottom of my heel, and then I'll pick up and you know do the um, do the gusset like I usually do. And the toe, I think I'm just going to do a stockinette toe. But yeah, I think it's going to look really cool. I think it gives it um, up close. It gives it like some really cool texture, especially with the the little micro striping there. Like it just looks very textured, even though it's not, I think, the sock. Yeah, it's, it's very super nice. soft. Yeah, it, it, you did a really good job with this. Um, I do have a question, though. Please. Just because, and it has literally nothing. So you prefer 72 stitches. I do. So mm-hmm. then I should probably add a 72 stitch cylinder to the no, circular so sock. No, so the circular sock, it's just all about tension. So 72 stitches on a circular sock machine is going to be different than okay. how I knit a 72 stitch. Well, I mean, if we need one, we could always get True. it. True. Totally. But, okay. But no, and, I think the 64 on, this, on the circular sock machine will be good. All right. And I don't have any more in the shop, so I can add it to a list of stuff to, to die. die again. Oh, you totally should. It's... um. It's really cool. I I think you did a really good job with it. Like, it's a lot of fun colors, and the colors changes happen very often. And I don't think you can really see this, but there's some really cool, like, random speckles of, like, this tealy bluish color that pops in every once in a while, which is really, really fun. Um, So for my heel, just so that you know, I'm, I'm sure that you can pick up on this, but... For my heel, especially with a heel flap and gusset, I go to uh, Magic Loop. It's just much more easy. It's just easier for me to to manage and maintain. Oh, yeah. So Look at this news. Another piece of news. So we were very um, concerned that we might not be able to make it to Montreal. A lot of you were also concerned. But look what arrived while we were in Maryland. Yay. We had to call and do the like, expedited mm-hmm. processing and shipping. Um, but these came, and then we also got the cards Yeah, that we can use as well. Yeah. And um, it was even nerve-wracking when we called to do the expedited thing, because, of course, the person on the phone has to say, like, this is no guarantee that you're going to get this. We'll put the request in. But whew, yes, it, we got it within, like, two days after. Yeah, two days after calling. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited about this. I, I love the cushiness of that garter. My last pair of socks, I did a garter heel turn as well. So the entire heel, the whole cup of the heel was garter stitch. But I think this will give a really good um, feel on the back of my heel, Mm -hmm. but just not the bottom, which will be really good. And I did about six and a half inches of a leg, which I've been knitting longer legs of my socks or I've been trying to, but this is my sweet spot. It's kind of like a, almost like a crew sock, not, not super, super long. It's just, it's a, it's a good middle. And the way that my legs are built, it kind of lands right below my calf. Oh, interesting. Which is comfortable for me. Or like right at the calf there. So, anyway, that's that. That's, good that's job. whip number one. Okay. So, my first whip is a new cast on. It's living in my Portland leather These are great bag. bags. Um, so I did swatch for this. Where is my swatch? It's a very baby swatch. I don't like to do large swatches, y'all. And part of the reason I don't like doing large um, swatches, I probably would do it more so with a superwash yarn because that stretches differently than a non-superwash. But when I'm doing a gauge swatch, I'm really just looking for the stitches per inch. Yeah. I don't mind the row gauge because that you can adjust the length on the majority of sweaters it's yeah yeah i can adjust the length if i need to so this is the my gauge swatch that's it i measured um and i hit gauge so i'm using the recommended needles i am knitting the um bumpy cardigan those are my good notes by max maxim seer max the knitter 
Um, I saw the sample when we were at Pick Up Every Stitch. This is the test knit version, so it's still being test knit, but here's what it will look like. So it's very reminiscent of the Moon Bumps wrap. Mm -hmm. So I'm knitting it using Spin Cycle in the color Stay Ready. And I'm using Le Garçon, their British DK, in the color Louis Shade. Right? Yeah, Louis Shade, which is 75% BFL wool and 25% Masham. Oh, wow. It feels very rustic in the... Um in the ball yes like but the skein that but feels, this is super soft yeah like one even just knitting with it i was like oh this is some pretty yeah. like special yarn nice. you could just tell that it's going to be make a really nice fabric right so here's what I oh have. you've made some progress yeah here's what i have so far I should have put some needle stoppers on, but I forgot. Oh, we got those new needle stoppers. I can't wait to start using them now. We did? Mm-hmm. I did. I didn't, did I? No. You got two pairs. I did not. Well, they're for us. That's a lie. They're for me. So here's where I am so far. The the colors are great. I mean, blue and gray, but like, it's so good. So what I'm doing oh, with this. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I see what you're doing. So what you do, you knit, you do an I-cord. And then you pick up stitches and continue knitting. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the process of this. So really easy. This just doesn't knit. have the woven in dashes. like No, the... it's not going to have the oh, bumps see. like right. the moon bumps uh, wrap. Okay. So it's just going to be like this. Um, it what... looks very clean and sophisticated. Yeah. And what I enjoy about this pattern, there's no button band. And the way that Max designed it, he designed it so that it doesn't kind of close like a traditional cardigan to be buttoned. It just... Like an, like the simple hug cardigan from. Um, yeah, yeah, Cozy. kind of where it just mm -hmm. hangs, and yep. you have some space in between the two bands. Yeah. Right. Yep. I guess that's what you would say. But what's really nice is that the band is incorporated into the knitting. I have that's great. So you don't have to pick up and knit anything right. once you're done. You're done. So you have an I cord and some ribbing. Yeah. So this is just incorporated. You don't have to do anything extra. You're not picking up stitches when you're done to do a button band or anything like that. And I like to, it's so funny because, um, and this is kind of going into Marilyn Sheep and Wool. At dinner on Friday night, speaking with Jonna, we were talking about a cardigan. And I want to say, I'm pretty sure it was there. And how I believe she wanted to knit, she thought about knitting her husband one and said that he would prefer a style of a button band that's knit this way. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like vertically, not horizontally, where you pick up the stitches and your ribbing goes horizontally and not yeah, vertically, yeah, yeah, you know? Sure. So this is, as soon as I started knitting this, um, I was like, oh, this is kind of what she would prefer on a cardigan oh, if she were to make it for nice, yeah. um, her husband. And I, this knits up pretty quick. I cast this on Monday. So this is less than a week's worth of knitting. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm doing with my spin cycle, just so you guys can see. So here's one skein. I got this in Maryland. So we'll talk about that. And here's skein number two, same colorway. So really, really different. This one is incredibly light. This one has a lot more dark in it. So I'm alternating. I'm going to do a light and a dark, a light and a dark. And I'm hoping, I think at some point they'll kind of both be yeah. light and yep. both be dark. Yep. But that may happen on the sleeves. So I'm just going to keep going one light, one dark, and see what happens. I was concerned that this dark wouldn't show on I here. It does. But when you get to this side of it, and this is where the dark starts happening, it's totally seeable. Seeable? Visible. <laughs> Visible? Seeable? No, it is. It, <clears throat> so I'm super excited for this. Me too. It's like you're going to have like... High contrast, low contrast. High, High contrast, contrast like, low It'll be contrast. really cool. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can try to plan that out for the sleeves as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe on the, I don't know, maybe on the sleeves I might go the opposite. Yeah. You know, like where there's a low contrast here, maybe I'll make it high contrast on the sleeve and do that all the way down. Super cool. But I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm kind of just making the decision as I go, but I am almost at sleeve separation actually. 
Really? I think I have to do one more bump, which I'm not too far from doing. I'm about halfway to the next bump. And then once I do the bump, I'm pretty sure I get ready to separate sleeves. And then once I get to the body, I think it's going to fly off the needles. Mm -hmm. The I-cord does take some time. That's a lot of stitches. Currently, it's a lot of stitches. Like I think right now I'm over 300 stitches once i get to the steven west shawl every three bumps pretty much it pretty much and then i'll get just over 400 prior to the sleeve bind off Mm. and then i'll bind off and i'll be under three again oh no but that yarn is staying right in place good job Uh, so yeah in it i am knitting this on a us5 and i did my ribbing on a us3 i actually had to rip it out because i forgot to use smaller needles and I am knitting the fifth size. So the fifth size is meant to fit a chest. One, two, three, four, five. That's 42 to 46 inches. I, I have a 42 inch chest. Mm-hmm. So that will fit me perfectly, I think. Yeah, um, it'll look really good. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Should I? No, I shouldn't have gone up. 42 is good because it's meant to be, it's not going to be close. So I think I'll be great. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. But other than that, really happy with both of the yarns. I've been enjoying, I like, you know, spin Mm -hmm. cycles nice. And what's really fun for me with this sweater is that all of the yarn used is purchased at different yarn stores. So I I bought this from Pick Up Every Stitch, this from Knit New Haven. And this from Magpie. Yeah. So and it's a nice honestly, reminiscent. And it all to, was bought within three weeks. Yeah. So. Back to the sizing. The the stitches relax a lot in your swatch. Yeah. They've relaxed a lot. So that'll be that'll be really nice. Yeah, and um it's just really this it bloomed incredibly yeah. nice. The stitches are super even. Um and it's it really is. It's what a nice a lovely yeah. yarn. Cool. So that is my first whip. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> my second one I'll do is also a uh, test knit. I'm still working on the Parish Line Sweater 2.0. And um, this is by Beth McDonald Stone. I started this quite a while ago, but it's okay. I'm taking my time with it. It's a fingering weight and worsted weight sweater. Um, let me move some of our things out of the way. This is living in my Portland leather bag. I do like how your bag has more structure to it. Being... Well, this is because it's wax. I know. Canvas, but I also like yours, too, the, the unwax. It's just nice. Yeah. Just no, really I, nice I really like them. Yeah. They do come with an optional shoulder strap as well. But yeah, I, I took mine it. off just because I use it more like a... You a know what? Maybe I'll thing. take it, put the strap on and take it. That's what I'll take as my knitting bag for Montreal because I could fit multiple projects yeah, in that. Totally and then good. when we go to like Knit City, I could bring that with me. Yeah. Good idea. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder, the yarn that I'm using is, um, Holst Super Soft in Slate Gray. We got cones of that. I have a ton left. Um, and for the color work portion is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Dove Heather. So the color work is actually done in the worsted weight yarn and the body and the sleeves and everything else is done in a fingering weight yarn and what that does is oh here's some here's some more of the skein this is what's left over actually i think i'm done with this now but i'm gonna i'm gonna hang on to this because i may do some sleeve detail i'm not sure okay it doesn't call for it in the pattern but i might do it um what's really cool is that it really um pops out the the color work yeah. The the worsted weight here. So where I don't think I had where I was last time, but I finished the body. Um, can you just pull down the, the body? So what's cool about this is that it is not um it is not ribbing. It's just one by one color work down the bottom there, which looks really, really cool. And I bound off using Jenny's Super stretchy, summer Judy's off. jumper. I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but um, I use that 
and it's curling now because it's just all knit stitches and I did uh, my floats are you know they look good they're they're not too tight or anything so hopefully when I block it I'll pin this down you know it should be just fine yeah <clears throat> and then I picked up one of the sleeves already and um, I've done quite a bit of decreases yeah here so I think I'm like more than halfway done with my decreases I think it did I have to do like 16 of them or something okay one two three four five six seven eight I did nine um, decreases so I have a few more to go I've tried the sweater on it fits me it it's fits a good very fit. very yeah. well um it'll fit even better like once it's blocked yeah and everything just kind of like loosens up and goes into place yeah and so I'm using the recommended needle size um which is a US 6 and or a four millimeter and a seven I believe or a five a four for the um the collar the cuffs and the um ribbing ribbing well or the fine the hem hem good job thanks so yeah so that's where i am i'm really really excited about it i think it looks like a really sharp um it's yeah. sharp looking sweater i'm very happy with the holst <clears throat> it is definitely a little crunchy and you can tell that it's got the spinning oil still in there but i got used to it really uh really quickly and it's not a problem right now for me. And then once it, my swatch, I don't really know where I did with my swatch. I did swatch for this and the holst does get soft. And Kevin will show you in a second too. But yeah, it's a folded, folded over collar. Um, and I think it's going to be a really, a really nice looking sweater once it's all done. Yeah. So I'm super excited about it. I'm hoping I can probably finish a sleeve soon. I'll probably bring this with me to... Um, to Montreal as well, just because I'd like to have a larger project with me. But yeah, I don't know what else to say about it, but I, I'm really loving the pattern. I haven't had to make any modifications whatsoever. She's, um, you know, even down to where to put in your decreases. I'm following that. The, oh, actually, you know what? I did do one modification for the sleeve. Um, it tells you to do the decreases every so many rows. And I ended up um, skipping that first decrease, so I knit double the amount before the next, um, before that first decrease, just because there wasn't. It, I didn't feel like there were a lot of stitches on the underarm. It would have worked fine because I did try it on, um, but I'm a little bit happier now keeping a little bit more uh, width there. So I'm happy nice. with what I did. So I just need to remember, remember that, so I can do it again on the second sleeve. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have much more left. No. Sleeves, no. But... And sleeves. I know, like people often say, like, "Oh, sleeve island," but I think sleeves go really quick. Yeah. And I'm just doing them on the small circulars. These are, um, these are the Chowgu, the the blue set in the little blue, uh, blue bag. So they're like two inch. You can use two inch or three inch tips. They come with, and the little cord. So I think these are. I think it ends up being nine inch circulars, to be honest. And I just go round and round, oh, yeah. round and round. Nice and easy. Um, so the next project I'm going to talk about is actually, so it kind of was a whip and then I took it out because I didn't like what, I think I messed something up when I was knitting it. But this is a sweater I'm going to cast on. And the idea with this one is I would like to have it ready to wear for Rhinebeck weekend. So I'm going to use it as a 30 minute, knitting in the morning project i love that idea. so i just and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set a timer on my phone 30 minutes mm -hmm. like not do anything else not be distracted by stuff so i'm going to knit the um so basic by max um i bought this cone of holst same when, time i bought we yeah bought, we, we bought these together. at the same time this is called glacier so it's the super soft and I believe it's these a are beautiful color. 500 grams. Yeah, I don't know what they are, but they're... So I did two swatches for this one. This was my first swatch, and I um, immediately went down a, si a needle size. So the pattern itself calls for... Wait, did I... Maybe I didn't. Crap. A US 4 and a US 3. Oh, no. This is the US 4, but I'm getting more stitches per inch 
So your gauge is loose. Yeah. So this yep. is, hold on, 26 stitches per inch is what you're supposed to get. I'm getting 24. So I'm going to keep this and I'm going to go down and knit the size below. So I would typically knit the one, two, three, four. I would have knit the fourth size, which would be for a chest circumference of 45 and a half inches. So because I'm getting 24, I did the maths, I'm going to knit the third size, which is for a 41 and a half inch chest. And that should get me above a 42 inch with some positive ease. So I'm going to double check my gauge on this again. Because initially when I measured it, I think I was at like 22, but I think it was still a little bit damp. Yeah. So what I did is then I went down another needle size. I went down to US three and I did a much smaller because I was over it. Um, I'd make them longer. Like mm -hmm. I do th maybe 70 stitches is what I cast on. Oh, that's a lot. So stitches. that I can measure it in multiple places and see because my gauges might change from the beginning to the end or mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle. So I could just measure it at multiple spots. And this one, it said I was the same gauge. So then I went back to this one. Because you like that fabric better. I like this fabric better. It's a little bit looser. Um, so I went back to this one and I measured again yeah. after it was like a couple of days. So it was definitely fully dry and I got 24 stitches. So that's why I decided to go with the US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter. Plus, so um, as you're knitting in the round, your gauges will loosen up. Like, yeah. You'll loosen up as you go and get comfortable with the pattern. And for the swatch, because like Ray was saying, there's a lot of spinning oil in this. I blocked it. Th I washed it three times. I did two washes in Dawn. Mm -hmm. And then I did one wash in Euclid. And it definitely, I mean, definitely softens up. Um, our friend Carrie knit an entire color work sweater out of holst. oh my god it's so light too i know out of holst and it w is so beautiful and so yeah. light and it was really really soft um when we were able to see it in person so i'm not concerned about it it does feel a little bit weird to knit with initially but once you get going with knitting it it's yeah. actually okay it didn't bother me it's as much. very springy it is it's a very springy Yarn fabric too. um it is very thin which surprised me that being a thin yarn that I got less stitches. I would think with a thin yarn. Yeah, you would have gotten more. I would have gotten more per yeah. inch, which is fine. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's kind of exfoliating. I mean, that it's not that rough. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm, I kid. I kid. I don't know. I mean, I think it would be next to skin fine. Yeah. So what I've heard about whole super soft is yeah. the more you block it and the more you wear it and wash it yeah um the better it gets yeah for sure so i'm super excited for this yeah once I just your have own, to, like, um, skin oils get in that too yeah so i'm gonna um cast on cool, this okay. weekend great and i would like to at least this weekend get past the collar so that i'm just doing my like working on raglan and mm -hmm. blah 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 and then I'm just going to do 30 minutes a day on it and see what happens. Cool. Because my goal, I'm really going to focus on some sweater knitting over the next couple of I months. I know. I'm really into the sweaters. I have this one. <clears throat> or garments. I on. have to finish the other cardigan that I just have to go back, I think, and look at my collar because I think I knit the wrong number of stitch or rows. And then I have my Brooklyn Tweed one that I want to pick up and get knitting again. And then I have my... stone soup from bare naked wools that i want to I do found his, some really cool patterns his home cardigan which robin gifted to us two years yeah. ago i think when yeah. we were at connecticut sheep and wool she had gifted us his yeah me the his home cardigan and it, there's a v-neck version and that's the one that, that i want in it so i want to get going on these sweaters excellent cool i have one more whip i have one more actual whip and not Oh, do you want to go? No, you can go. You sure? Yeah, I just went. Okay. This, um, I talked about this as a future cast on, and I did cast it on. This is called the Summer Friday Tank by Kevin Haggerty, um, also known as Pearl Jam, at 
pearl underscore underscore jam on Instagram. Um, it is a very simple summer tank top. And he does have a new pattern out right now that he's uh, put out for testers. I did not do that. So I, <clears throat> I'm using... Oh, here, actually. I have this not even kicked up. I'm using Dapple by Brooklyn Tweed. This is 40% uh, merino, no, 60% merino and 40% organic cotton. And it's been discontinued. It has been discontinued, <clears throat> unfortunately. Um, but this is the colorway. The colorway is Blueprint. <coughs> it's Excuse a DK me. weight. It's, um, they're, they come in 50 gram skeins. I'm going to have plenty of yarn, I think, for this. I was a little bit nervous. But it's a woolen spun 2-ply 20.7 micron merino. Last time I knit with this, I think I had mentioned that it, it wasn't such a great experience. I'm having the completely opposite experience this time. I feel like it's knitting up beautifully. It feels comfortable in my hands as I'm knitting it up. Um, and I made some really good progress on this. Um, what happened? Oh, that stays down there. So it's knit, you knit the back first flat you do, and then you do some armhole shaping on the bottom, um, some increases, and then you pick up and knit the shoulders, each shoulder individually, um, and add some increases around the neck there. Then you join those together, and then you knit flat down, and then you pick up. Oh wow! Around the uh, after the underarms, and then you knit in the round for the rest of the tank top. It took me a minute to kind of realize that was what was happening because I couldn't really wrap my mind around it. So here's what I have so far. Okay. Yeah. So the back was, I did the back all done um, and put my stitches on hold there for when I'm getting ready to, to pick back up again. Then I did, you do the shoulders. So then I did, there's some short rows up here. So I did some short row shaping um, for the shoulders. Okay. And did them on both sides, did my increases, and then picked up, you cast on um, a bunch of stitches using the backwards loop cast on to join those two in the round. And then um, this is where, yeah, this is what I've been doing now. So I'm just knitting back and forth um, until I get to, for my size, I'm doing the fifth size on this, two, three, four, which is a 44 inch. Okay. I, I wasn't really interested in a... Uh, super yeah right um so i wanted a little bit of ease there and that should this. i think what give you like three inches of positive ease uh it should give me about three inches of positive ease yeah so i just remeasured my chest it was about it was like 41 inches so i have um i have a few more inches to go maybe like two or three um more inches to go maybe one based on i that. have to um it's it's so i could i kept track of okay. the rows that i did if you can see here. Yeah. And then um, you want to kind of have it mirrored on the back, but you got to start it at the top of the shoulder. Okay. To do it because the, the front collar comes down a little bit more Lower. than the back does. So um, if my math is, cr or if my counting was correct, and I did it quick, pretty uh, briefly, <clears throat> I think I have like five more, five more rows to go. Okay. So yeah, it'll, it'll be, you know, it'll be quick. I think that's just a little bit too, too deep. I want to make sure that I have enough room underneath yeah. um, my arm as well. But I love it. Like it feels, um, it feels really cool. Yeah, it feels like cotton. Yeah, you know it with that. Um, I think it's gonna not be nice. as rough as cotton, mm -mm. but it, you can tell that there's cotton in here, which is really nice too because cotton doesn't take the dye. That's why you get that marled effect. Yeah, the marled is really really cool. So you get those different colors of the yeah. like white in there too yeah yeah it's it's very nice yeah so i'm and, excited you know i'm definitely excited about this if this works out well and i'm comfortable wearing this then i can i, I feel like i would definitely do um some more knits for like summertime maybe even a t-shirt or that, something i think that would be really cool that's actually a really good um point so one of the things that i would like to knit for summertime we again it was a conversation we were having when we on Friday night in Maryland is if anybody knows of one, I tried to look and, you know, 
it's just one of the issues with um, Ravelry and the way that the patterns can be tagged. Um, I would like to find a cardigan vest mm. so, or a sleeveless cardigan. I think that would be a really good summer option. We were talking about that. So that would be really good out of a yarn like Dapple, which is wool and cotton. It'd be a little bit lighter. So if anybody has any recommendations for a uh, sleeveless cardigan for um, men, mm -hmm. comment down below, please. Um, <clears throat> the So when I swatched for this, I liked um, the, the recommended needle size is a US 8, I believe. Let me just double check. Usually I have it here. Uh, that's weird. Oh, US eight. Um, I didn't care for the fabric. It was it was too uh, too loose for me, like too. And I wanted something a little bit denser. So um, plus, like my gauge was. I had a lot less stitches um, for my gauge. So US 7 got me gauge, and it made a fabric that I was much more um, comfortable with. Good. So I did go down a needle size, just as okay. an FYI. And he says, you know, obviously like any garment, but he makes it, he says it's very, very important that you, um, you change your needle size to get the gauge that you are comfortable with, you know, for your size. All right. So uh, that's that. Those are all my oh, whips. My last whip is living in my beautiful oh, sister's bag that we got bag. at Woolen Folk. And I don't have the tag, but you guys showed this last week. This is what I knit on while we were in Maryland. I made some progress on my hatch hat. This is a Brooklyn Tweed a pattern. Gorgeous. By Emily Green. Yarn. It is a, you could do a beanie or a watch cap. I'm doing the watch cap because I like the brim. Um, and I'm using Brooklyn Tweed Arbor in the colorway herein. It takes two skeins of the yarn. So this is a DK weight. Mm -hmm. I knit mine on the recommended needle size, which is a US 3, which is a three and a quarter millimeter. Um, it's, it's one size because it's all ribbing and it's just different types of ribbing. So I did a cable cast on, which I talked about this, the cable cast on when following it, I, you have to slip in this particular pattern, your first stitch so that your ribbing matches up mm -hmm. and you do, um, uh, currently a one by one rib for, I think it was four inches. I actually almost stopped really early because I just read the pattern. I was reading the one for the beanie mm -hmm. and not the watch cap. So I think I'm there and now I'm ready to switch to the next section of ribbing, which changes. That's exciting. So I think there's like four changes in ribbing, three to four different ribbing numbers in here. But it's just a really nice yeah. pattern. It's one of the, if not the best fitting hat that I've made. It's a Yeah, it fits beautifully. It's my... Um, I have one in Arbor as well in the colorway Butte, I believe. And that one I probably grab the most to wear. Mm -hmm. So, yep, that's that. And that's all the knitting I've done the last two weeks. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, we still made progress on things. Yeah, we did. We, I yeah. mean, like I said, it was a busy I don't regret anything. two weeks. Um, and... Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy with Me the too. progress that we've made on yeah. stuff. So I'm really excited about what I'm what I am working on. Yeah. So I think that's like it's nice. You know, and it's nice sometimes to like take your time and enjoy like the the projects that you're knitting on. Yeah, there's no rush. No. No rush to finish anything. Yeah, I, I would really love like to chill. finish stuff, Same. but I'm also knitting the things that I want to knit on. Yeah. And the other things can wait until I'm ready to knit on them. Again. Agreed. So I'm going to prioritize the tank just because I think I'm pretty close to joining in the round. And once I'm in the round, I think that's going to go pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, this way I'll get some wear out of it. Like I want to prioritize the cardigan and get to sleeve separation. Right. Um, Cause I, I do think, I think the body is going to knit up pretty quickly on that. Mm -hmm. So with the exception of the I cord section, that takes a little bit of time, but the rest of it, I think it's just going to fly. So yeah. Yeah. Plus the sweater, I mean, I probably won't be able to wear that again until 
fall. I true. So true. Um, um I think that's all. I think that's all of our knitting. So, um, all right. Before we jump into Maryland, because that would be next. Yeah. Oh we, yeah, let's talk about this. We didn't talk. About we forgot to show time. this, I and I actually don't know what's still left on the show. Well, obviously this stuff is left. I don't know how many of each, but I did do a shop update like two weeks ago, or yeah, right before our last podcast. Yeah. So some of the stuff that's currently in the shop. This is scorched wood. I love this on so DK. Much. It's a four ply. It has two hundred approximately two hundred and thirty one yards. So it's nice, like, browns and beiges and oranges. This one is going to seem like an odd name. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can find the picture. So what I'd like to do when I'm coming up with names, if I can't think of it right off the top of my head, I Google the colors that are in the yarn. And then I look at images and then I try to come up with something. So this yarn is like a beigey gray. So a taupe almost. Carrie's favorite color. Carrie loves this. Um, <laughs> it has some orange, some brown and gray speckles. Um, I dyed it like three times because the or twice. The first time I wasn't happy with it. So then I dyed it again. But I was looking and this was the image that came up. So I Googled orange, gray, and brown. So this is what came up. And yeah, I was like, it's, okay. It's good. So I called it Autumn really Drive. Good. Yeah. So here, yeah, let's see. Right, so you have some dark grays, browns, oranges. It's always cool to see a picture. Um, this one is called Monsters U because it reminds me of the an image from Monster University and Mike on it. How fun though! This is very summery. This one I have call I called Bird of Paradise. Yes, and I googled Bird of Paradise because that's what I was thinking, and it showed like a bird on a branch, and it had some of these colors in it. So in it's paradise. stuck. So it's like this almost tealy, leaning more green, a darker yellow, some gray in there, and this is DK. Um, this one was fingering weight eighty twenty. <laughs> Uh, two ply. This was is Ooh, called how gorgeous, huh? Broken Hearts. Yeah. And that went because it has like your pinks and kind of reds, but then the gray in it. So Broken Hearts on DK. This is called Dust Storm, which actually would pair quite well with the Autumn Drive. Yeah. This is more tan, and it has. Some like dark red I love the and speckles orange in speckles. Yeah. This was actually supposed to be asteroid belt, mm -hmm. which I probably should have brought up, but I did not. Um, but I did something differently. Oh, the temperature of the water I used was different. So the speckles hit it differently and it didn't take the color as well. So um, I called it Dust Storm. I love it. And then lastly, I still have some of this. I actually have to dye some more. But this is one of my favorite. I need to. Me too. Did you knit this? Did either one of us knit with no, this? No, but I want to. Um, I feel like somebody did. Somebody must have sent me a picture. This is called Flancy, Flancy, Fancy Flannel. And it's just named after a flannel shirt that I have. That when I grabbed this, I was wearing the shirt. And I was like, oh, okay. It matches my shirt incredibly yeah, it was well. Really cool. So that is... I have like a couple, maybe a couple on DK and a couple on fingering for this. Mm -hmm. But there's some other things in there. This, we actually had all of this up here last podcast yeah. and forgot to talk about it. So now it's time for the good stuff. It's that was all good stuff. I know. Now I know. So now we're going to chat about our trip to Maryland. Where to begin? So first we planned incredibly poorly. <laughs> um we had intentions of going on Sunday and we didn't just because of time constraint. It is a six hour drive for us. So we did drive. We left fairly early on Friday morning. I think we were out of the house by like 630. Yep. And funny thing is, is that when you're looking at the directions and you're getting directions, it had us at four and a half hours. So we're like, 
perfect. Yeah. But then Connecticut and New York traffic, awful. Connecticut traffic was the worst. It was. New on the York way there. was not terrible. No, New York wasn't bad that early in the morning. Connecticut was the worst. Yeah. First thing in the morning. So it extended our four and a half hour drive to six hours. Mm-hmm. We stopped a bunch though. We stopped like four times. You know, and shout out to the New Jersey Turnpike. They uh, honestly, straight drive was super easy it was split up between like you can get in the all car lane or like the mix lane with trucks and stuff yeah it was actually my favorite part of the and they had a um a rest stop like every five miles or something like that or 15 miles 15 to 20 miles it felt like five miles i know because you just you felt like you always saw a rest stop yeah yeah and it was it was really um a pleasant drive once we got to that once we got to that point, you know, yeah. we, it was really, really pretty. There were a ton of tolls though, because we ended up going through, there are no tolls in Connecticut, but to get into New York, yep. there was a toll, New Jersey, there was a toll. We went through Delaware and then, but we were only in Delaware for like 15 minutes. I feel Yeah. Like. Delaware. I don't feel like we were in Delaware yeah. long. And then we um, hit Maryland and there was a toll there too. And we didn't like, I mean, we, we don't really travel very, very often. So we thought like a handful of quarters would probably be We enough. were struggling to, to try to make get we, money together. We were a little bit nervous that we weren't going to have money to pay some of these tolls. So I think we're going to have to graduate to an easy pass maybe one of these days. Yeah. But anyway, so we made, you know, we made it work. The the drive it, you know, 6 the, hours. We took a lot of breaks and I'm glad we took the breaks. It made a big difference coming home. We didn't take as many breaks and we, we took felt one it. break on you, the way home. Kevin was I, a driving Machine. Machine on our way home. Yeah. So well the whole time. So like yes. we we went up there. Kevin drove for probably the first like four hours. Yeah, I did. And I took over at the at the end. So it was probably like two hours, maybe two and a half hours. It was the last. Really... We went to the last rest stop. I think we could in in Jersey. In Jersey. And I and... drove the rest of the way. Right. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, you you drove you drove quite a bit. And I think that was the only time you drove. I think I drove the rest of the time. I drove. While no, we you drove. Maryland. Yes. Okay. We'll um, talk about that. Yeah. So, yeah. So it wasn't bad. So, mm-hmm. so we, our first stop, which was a complete last minute um, decision that we didn't share with anybody, is that we wanted to check out Magpie Fibers. Right. And um, I don't think we didn't, we hadn't decided that on our last podcast. No. That I, was I, like a couple of days beforehand. We're like, oh, maybe well, let's stop there. Right. And the reason that we decided to stop at Magpie is that. Um, you know, following them on Instagram, we saw that they were having some vendors mm-hmm. there, but we also saw that they were in Frederick, Maryland, which we were already going to for Yarn Centric. And Yarn Centric was also a last minute decision. Prior to us leaving, we had watched our friend Aquila, a recent episode of hers. So she is on YouTube and Instagram as a lefty knitter, where she talked about she was going to be doing a demo at Yarn Centric on her um, Earl Bacher, Gearheart. So I was like, okay, we have to go to Yarn Centric. And then once we made that decision and saw that Magpie Fiber was also in Frederick where Yarn Centric was going to be, then I said, okay, it makes sense yes. to do Magpie if we can. So we bought tickets for Yarn Centric just because we weren't sure of timing. We bought a 1 to 2.30 slot and then the 2.30 to 4 o'clock slot. Yeah. And we figured we would do Magpie either before or after, depending on what time we got yeah, there. Yeah, because Magpie was open to like 7 or 8, 8 p.m. or that something. Night. Mm-hmm. Um, we ended up getting to Maryland at 12.30. 12.30. So we were like, all right, we have time to kill. So we went to Magpie first. Can... Go ahead. And first off, downtown Frederick is beautiful, Cute. and I wish we had way more time to spend down there because it was adorable. Yeah. Which I think was probably the o- overreaching theme of our trip. I wish wish we had more time. Yes, absolutely. Um, but the honestly, this store was amazing. Kevin made fun of me because I said, like, I felt like it was... What did I say? I don't know oh, the words that I used. Crap, what did you say? I don't know. Oh, man. It one will of, come to me. One of the Ray words, probably, my vocabulary. But I thought it was, like, a hip, like, cool um, place. I can't remember what I said, but um, I don't. I it don't was know. very, very busy. It was a lot bigger than I expected it to be. 
Yeah. And they had amazing things there. It so we walked in and you know right off the bat we um we met some of you folks. It was yes. really really cool. Um there were other like um other podcasters that were in there. Um Yeah, we got to meet Gary. Gary from yep, Gary Nitz, Gary, Gary Rides, who also has um mm-hmm. A YouTube channel. Crafti- craftivism? craftivism? I'm going to pull it up. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was such a cool, such a cool welcoming place. And then like, so it was, it was a really great start to our trip, I think. Of course, they had amazing things and, and the, um, the little pop-up trunk shows that they had. So like in each little area, there was somebody, um, some maker that, or small business that was, um, showing off some of their things and you can, you know, grab like right there and talk to, talk to the maker about their process and all of that. So it was super cool. Um, and Gary Nitz, Gary rides on Instagram is also the same on YouTube. It's Gary Nitz, Gary rides, a craft, a craftivism, craftivism podcast. podcast. I knew craftivism was in there Um, somewhere. So we got to meet him and then, um, see, and I'm really bad with names. We know, um, he was with, Like we know Instagram names, but he's South Paul Nitz. Yeah. So I'm gonna see if his real name's on there. It is not. So oh here. South Paul Nitz. Oh he hey, got look, to that was well. us. Yeah. Um And thank you, blanket statement. Thank you to everyone who tagged us. Um we mentioned this before and we'll continue to mention it. We are awful at taking pictures. I am in a constant state of squirrel at these events um, where I get very, very distracted. And I'm like super in the moment and move on to something else. Like we oh. just, you know what? So it, we just enjoy chatting with everybody do. that we forget to take the pictures. Yes. So um, please. So you all are great at tagging us. So you completely you. are. And also if, if you are at these events with us, you could always just shoot us a reminder. Like, do you guys want to take a picture too with your phone? And we'll see. Oh, yeah, please feel yeah, free to do that. Because we forget all the time. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, and there are so many other people that we met just in that one event that was fantastic yeah. to, like, chat with. Yeah. Um, and what's been really fun is, you know, prior to Ryan Beck of 2021, we had never, we'd been to one yarn event back in, like, 2017 in Connecticut. Yeah. Um. But what's been really fun about doing these is that I'm just recognizing faces right away. Same. Like, oh, oh yeah, I know you. Or, oh yeah, I know you. So it's really fun to to continue to see you guys at all of these events. Yeah. And then try, and now it's just like catching up. Like, how have you been? Like, blah, blah, blah. So it's really, really fun We may for be us. bad at the name part. Absolutely. But the faces, and we remember projects too. Like, oh, yeah. didn't last time we see you, you were wearing that bone yard shawl or like whatever. Um, it's, 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 I don't know. The community, the whole community thing is just incredible. The positive energy and vibe it's, was super cool. It was a great way to start things off. Of course, um, we broke the bank here a little bit. We did the most shopping probably at Magpie. Um, I think we're tied between Magpie and Yarn Centric. We did the least amount of shopping at Maryland, Maryland Sheep and Wall. <laughs> so, so let's start. We with... actually went shopping twice at Magpie Fibers. We did, and I am. Um, <laughs> we'll get to who to blame for that uh, in a in a moment. So, the bag kind of ripped a it little did. bit. So, but. This is what we got from Magpie. It's actually not that big of a bag. No. It's pretty good. So yeah. what's really cool about Magpie, too, is that they're in an old bank. So they have a totally. vault in there, which was fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm and not quite sure whose colors. While we were there, that's yours. Thank while you. we were there on this particular day, Friday, they had four, I want to say four vendors, like pop-up shops. So. Okay. Is that everything? Well, I'm still... Whoops, sorry. I'm still pulling some things out. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Super cute. Oh, look. We met... Um, we met Lisa there? Yes. Lisa? For you, Fiber. For you, Fibers. Mm-hmm. An so inclusive the- fiber community. I said I loved 
her logo. Yeah. And um, this is a yarn store in Oberlin, Ohio. Yes. I think Lisa might be like, if I'm not mistaken, one of the first people we saw there. Yeah, I think we. Right? I think it was her. Um, and then this is just Magpie's um, card. It was their flagship store. And in the two, so we interacted with three of the employees, and they were all super lovely. divine. One oh, of look, them, I'm ready. Super excited. I feel like I'm I know. Ready. One I'm of ready them, for another event. We are talking to one of the vendors there, who we'll get to, and one of the employees, um, like overheard us. She's like, "Just do another lap. You have to do another lap." And she was super right. We should have done another lap. We should have. But we didn't. And we ended up doing kind of Oh, a no, lap. I'm missing one. No, I have one. Oh, no, you here. have them. Okay. All right. So the first, our first purchase. Well, I mean, I'm going to say our first grab was from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. Yes. And she had these really cool stitch markers. I think we might have saw this one first. I'm not even sure. So we got okay. Three so sets. also, truth be told, Kevin made a purchase, joined a club, um, before we went to Maryland. Oh yes, and I didn't know about this club. Yeah, well, you did before we left for Maryland. The day before. So anyway, Kevin joined a succulent of the month club or some BS like that, and so <laughs> um, these were perfect. So like, look, this is the first set of stitch markers, and there are a bunch of. Succulents. Little succulents. Um, and so Twin Mount and Handcrafts, and we've seen some of her um, yeah. stitch markers on other podcasts, also had like the shawl. I forgot what she oh, called them. We didn't buy yeah. any, but they were to keep your shawl in place. So it's kind of like a shawl pin, but not really like It was like a think. screw. Yeah, it screws in yeah. and it keeps it in place. They were really um, cute. They were Just cute. a bunch of fun stuff. And then I saw these... Um, like the origami paper cranes. So I thought these were adorable. They so they're all cool. wood. And then I was really craving some coffee, so this really spoke to me. And you know how much we love our coffee. I think these is I love this that is set. so and adorable. That's the set Lisa has. Is it? Yeah, I believe Lisa, who's seventy two stitches or knit all the yarn on YouTube. Yeah. I believe that's the set that she has and oh, that was fun. the First thing, so okay. so we'll link the we'll link her shop down below. Yes, um, she's twinmountainhandcrafts.com. Yep, and I think we're gonna use one of these as a future giveaway. We'll put it in a little uh, prize package. Yeah, for all of you. That was our intention. We wanted to get two for us and then one for the podcast. So um, yeah, so maybe we'll do these. We'll do the paper cranes. Yeah, paper cranes okay. as a prize. Great, and then you can have the well. We'll split yeah. these. That's so fine. I'm gonna actually put those on the shelf. Great. So that was our first. That was our first grab. The, our second grab was another pop up that was there, and so somebody we had mentioned that we saw this yarn dyer. Yeah, and people, and I had never heard of them, and I'm surprised that I hadn't, and people, other people were surprised that we hadn't. Yeah, but in the vault, at the back of the store, literally, it used to be a bank. So there's a big old. It was huge. Door. Yeah. Um, and there's a vault back there was Explorer Knits and Fibers. Yes. So I could have bought a bunch of yarn from her. Me too. The colors were fantastic. So what I saw, which just spoke to me, was this skein of DK. So this is on their Rockies DK. It's 100% superwash merino, 274 yards for the 100 grams. And this is called the Kilame National Park. So just this beautiful, like, there's gr just a bunch of different greens yeah. and like that chartreuse green, some yeah. really dark, like, uh, like here you could see it's almost, you know, you got your really dark brown in there. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, I love the rusty orange here. So just a, a really pretty, and there's like almost this. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up like this light blue there. I just thought it was really, really beautiful. Um, yeah. So I got that. And while I was in there, <clears throat> um, I was really drawn to a lot of these colors. And like, it's so hard because the speckle yarn and 
have like the variegated yarn are so pretty and it's just sometimes hard to like know what to do with you know with all of that in a project and i had like zero projects in mind this weekend yeah or last weekend so it was very difficult i didn't want to just keep buying things just because they were so pretty even though i basically did um so i had this in my hand it's a boucle and the colorway is called daybreak it's a boucle dk 100 percent superwash merino 240 yards per 100 grams and Kevin had said, you know what? That would be really cool in this three-color shawl project, which I can't remember. I'm finding it right now. And um, he said as like the, you know, the color by itself, just to do like a, a boucle, it would be really cool with the texture and everything. And I was like, sold. I have an excuse now to purchase this yarn. So I grabbed this. It's super soft. It's really, really neat. Okay. Um, go ahead. So the pattern i'm thinking that i was thinking of is called glee shawl by espastrico i saw this on at haynes house instagram oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so it reminded and we me we actually saw that in person yeah it reminded me of a, a simpler version of vertices unite so you have two colors striping one yeah and then you have this section of the solid and that's Terry from At Haynes House. She's so sweet. So I thought that this would be really pretty in that solid section. And then um, this will go right into um, this. We got their swanky base, which we hear such great things about. This yes. is the squishiest, softest yarn ever. And so I got two, um, two colors of that and this. So this is going to be my shawl. This will be the main color, and then these will be the stripes. I think it's going to be so pretty. Me too. The um, the Swanky DK, this is Free Fallen. Oh my god, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's such a nice blue-gray. It's so pretty. And I think it's just 100%. Oh, no. it's no, it's their 80-10. Oh, it's an MCN. Yeah. 80% Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. No wonder why it feels so freaking delicious. And then this one is called Corsair. Yeah, I think that that's and such so a the, beautiful chocolate brown. Yeah, I love brown and blue together. I know, me too. It's I one really of my do. favorite combos. And then you bring in this like pop of like, and that's one of my favorite oranges. That yeah. burnt, rusty orange is beautiful. I think it's gonna look really cool in that. Yeah. So, um, I have to make sure that I write that down so I don't forget what to do with these. I'm so excited to to knit with all of them. So, that was my yarn purchase from there. Um, and while you were picking that out, kind of, right? Yes. So, hold on. We, right in front of the DK section of their magpie, like, wall, was Raquel from Sassafras Knits. Mm -hmm. So, we were chatting with her, and I... Um, and she has a bunch of like stitch markers and progress keepers and all of it is um, handmade and some of it's like recycled glass yeah. and things like that. So I saw this little mushroom on the hexagon. It is one of the most adorable it's little so things cute. that I saw. Um, and what was really fun, she had a little like section Do you know, of... I don't think I realized that it was on a hexagon instead of a circle. I know. I love that. <gasps> Me too. Um, but just like... Look, here's some of her other pieces. I just think she has really um, fun, interesting pieces. Yeah. They're so, out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I definitely would have. There were so many that I could have purchased. Like this one is cute. It's a little bird. Look at the little bird on it. I just think really good. Me um, too. Really good finds. Oh, look at the paw print. How mm -hmm. cute. Yeah, so a lot of it is um, glass, too, which I thought was fun. And, she, you know, she likes the reusing things. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so that's a fun little um, thing. And if we haven't said it already, all of their shops will be linked down below. So feel We're free gonna to have check a out a time the, time show to the show notes. Spot. I know, I know. The things we do for you. <laughs> and then I... And, by the way, our show notes are listed down below this video if we didn't see that already yeah you'll see it underneath the title of the video it'll say more you click on that 
and it'll and bring down all the links and everything. Just and then it's scroll like a, through. It's like a ten page paper that we write. It's really long with document. all of the stuff there. Yeah. Um, all right. So then my next purchase was also some of Magpie's swanky. Sock. Well, you also ended up getting the. Um, I got something else. Yeah. I don't have it here. You do. You got the um, spin cycle. Oh, duh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I was like, I don't have it here. So then I I was looking at DK, but then I went over to the fingering wall. And I this was my first one. So this is their fingering weight. It's so pretty. This is wood smoke. So, you know, gray, orange, yeah. brown. I was Love looking it. at that one as well. And this I got because I thought it would complement it very well. Mm -hmm. And I liked it even more because it's a one of a kind. So I thought these two would pair beautifully with each other because you have this color here yeah, in there. Mm -hmm. I think they're just going to be so great. Yeah. I have no idea what shawl this is going to be, but it will be a shawl. And because, I mean, you get some really decent. I mean, there. this one's 115 grams. So is this one. So actually, is they're both really? over. Is this one? I don't know because you have DK. I do. Check the uh, front label. Oh, yeah, it is 115 yeah. So they're 115 grams. grams. So this is some great yardage Whoa. on these. Oh, hello. So I'll find a two color shawl to make with that. I was going to say, then, it feels um, like. The last thing I got was the spin cycle. Yeah. Um, again, this is the. You got two skeins of that just in case. I did. Um, stay ready. Mm hmm. So that was our first round of purchases from. Yeah. So then, so we waited in line. We, you know, checked chatted, out, paid. checked out, and then we're walking out. And to the left, right before you walk out, was uh, Bertie Parker from Bertie Parker Designs. And her booth was very. Is, her name's Christy, though. Christy. Right. Which... Oh, no. Yes. You know what I mean. Yes. I know. Right. Um. <laughs> So her, she was very, it was a very popular booth. booth. So when, when I, when she was right in front of the swanky, like D, like swanky section. Yes. So while we were um, shopping for that, she was preoccupied. So we didn't have a chance to say hi, but she was free at that time. So of course, you know, we stop, we say hello, we're chatting and we're looking at all of her things. And then the first thing we see. And I posted this on Instagram, but she had these apple watch bands in like this knit stitch and then she had some cable stitches on one in all these different colors yeah here is the cable one. Oh yeah and this is oh look oh. at the colors it's gonna keep going yeah like i know so so of course we're like, well, yes, yes, please. Like, so we grabbed, we each grabbed one of those, and uh, again, this is, um, this is her shop. And also, she had a really cool product that is also leather, and it is a ruler and a stitch gauge. And it snaps together, attaches to a bag, and it's your bag handle. Like, what? And it also has So if the, you have, like, a knitting bag, you attach it? Yeah. But it also and, has the instructions for Kitchener Stitch on yes. it. Yes. So, like, there's Kitchener Stitch directions right there. You guys can see. So we're like, okay. Yes, please. And the color's gorgeous. Yeah, that's a really like nice metallic-y metallic green. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, really beautiful. And it's almost like a sage green. Yeah, it's I would really, say. really pretty. She had a bunch of different... Yeah, she does jewelry. Um, yeah. That's what I had previously known, really known her for, is the jewelry that I've seen. Um, you know, oh, like these those necklaces. those are really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she just does fun knitting-inspired products. Mm-hmm. And what's, you know, what actually really fun about this, at least for me, is that 
when we're at events, a lot of the jewelry is jewelry. Like, you know, it's not particularly my taste and what I would wear. It's a little more leaning, more feminine. So this was nice to see yeah, stuff to that have we could something get that, that was knitting and like yeah. that we could, that I felt yeah, yeah, comfortable yeah, yeah, yeah. wearing. So yeah. that was really fun. So um, anyway, I was like, th- that was yeah. Um, so that was that. We were probably in there for about an hour, hour. yeah, or so. Um, so after we did this again, lovely shop staff is fantastic. Um, here, if you want to. Sure, I'll put it. This stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so then we left there and we went to Yarn Centric, literally maybe a five minute drive. Um, yeah, it was super cool. Super convenient. And our first person that we went to go find was Aquila. Well, first thing we went to go Straight find. Straight to restroom. Was John. The John. Oh, I was like, who the hell is John? We had to go to um, peace. And. Yeah, so this is actually, we were talking about this last night. So on our way in, somebody who was there, her husband, was walking out. And then she walked out and stopped us. We were on the ramp going up inside. Uh, And, you know, we were chatting and then he's like, I thought I recognized those faces. And it's one of my favorite things is running into somebody there and they're with their husband and their husband is not a knitter, but they recognize us and they like know our voice or recognize our face because they see us on the TV in the living room. So that's always enjoyable for me. I don't know. Yeah, why. It's really I just funny. think it's funny. I know I did too. And I, I, yeah, I get a kick out of it or they're not knitting. You know, right. Friend or and like I get whomever. a kick. Yeah. I get a kick from champagne, pure right. alcohol. So, first okay. Off, so we go into, we walk into yarn centric and, um, you know, they scan our tickets and everything like that. And we, oh, we actually took a cute picture. I know. I, don't I was think just we posted. It, I don't know if, who has it. I think you have it. I oh was just going to look. Um, so, yeah. So we go to Yarn Centric and Maryland. You, um, um, you have it. I do not. Yes, I do. We took a selfie in front of the Yarn Centric. Oh, that's, that's you. That's not me. I mean, that's me, but that's not. In the yarn centric little, and that's called a stay in something that backdrop at those events. I can't remember the name of it. So we got little swag bags. Yeah, when we walked in. Look how fun. And um, inside is, let's see. Inside is a little, oh, what a cute bag. Yeah. We actually didn't go through these. Handmade zip pouch, size small, colorway is Heron, I think. And this is by Cassiopeia Yarns. And here's mine. Cassiopeia? Cassiopeia. Mine is this one. Oh, yeah, look how fun. So these were cute. These are very cute. Um, and, and there's it... a little, like, bead on it. Also came with oh, looky, a looky. little mini from 29 Bridges Studio, who are the, and I believe their husband and wife team, who put together Yarn Center. Yes. They were very, very sweet. Yes. Yeah, so they also had a booth there. Their yarn, there were so many color. I actually, I, I, that's I forgot a little to bit take, of a regret. Yeah. I wanted a bunch of their yarn because yeah. it was beautiful. I did not buy any, but it's like one of the booths that I was like, I have to remember them. Mm-hmm. Um because there were some colorways that I would like to try in the future. Yeah. So it says, thank you for coming to Yarn Centric. This is their go-to sock mini, 7525. It's a four-ply. Yep. And there's the card. Oh. That was, it's like, I don't know. It was so sweet to get one of these. Yeah, it was very I didn't very know nice. that we were getting like a little swag bags. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah. Um, and then, so then we went and we saw Aquila. We did. Again, a lefty knitter. We actually did a lot of damage here. So what was great about this trip, and it's with a couple people as we progress, like through the weekend, is that it was really fun to chat with people that we maybe have met at previous events, but didn't have the time to chat with them. Yeah. So we got to do that with a couple people. So that was really nice. But... So Aquila was there all day doing um, cranking on her sock mm-hmm. machine. She has uh, Earlbacher Gearheart, Speedster, 
Um, she's been using it for quite a while. She does do some videos on her YouTube channel showing how she uh, cranks a sock. And she had a nice table with her on different things that she made that were not socks. Like some that dolls. really sold you on it really did like seeing of some of it so she uses them to make tubes and then make some dolls yes. for her daughter yeah um, leg warmers fingerless mitts um, she does the full sock with a heel with a heel and a toe you know the hung hem for it so when we got there she was already talking to some people who were um, hanging out and explaining some stuff and she had talked to a gentleman about this particular brand and also i mean super knowledgeable knowing other I'm brands so knowledgeable and where they're from like whether it's in the u.s or canada or whatever the case was and she had just talked about why she went with um the earl bacher mm -hmm. and it was the customer service that she received when speaking to them and when she runs into issues so Hearing that from somebody, you know, just immediately put them up higher on the list yeah. than other places. And Not they've been that around we've had, since the 1800s. Yeah. Which is like... They've been around forever. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we got to just chat with her, give her a hug, um, hang out. She allowed a, me to sit down and crank. You guys um, may have seen that video. Yeah, we posted that on both YouTube and Instagram. It's like five second clip. Yeah, really. It's really fast. But... I was like, yeah, that's it. Done. Sold. On Monday, I will call and order one, which I did. Yes. So um, we hung out with her and then we're like, okay, I guess we can go start doing some shopping. Yes. Um, one of the first places that we stopped at and was... They, they were diagonally across from yeah. Aquila. And I was wearing... I was wearing a so it was May sixth, May fifth. Yes. Um, the day after May fourth, which for any Star Wars fans out there, there's oh, there's that like May saying the May the fourth be with you, right? And so I ended up wearing um one of my Pride shirts, but it had the um Millennium Falcon on it with like a rainbow thing. And Excuse um, me. we stopped. The first booth there was Fangirl Fibers. Who are also um, Star Wars people, and she saw, you know, she saw my shirt, and she's like, "I want to, I want you guys to have this. I feel like you would appreciate it." So she, um, she gave us these stickers Oops. that says, "A Knitter's Place is in the Resistance," or "A Stitcher's Place is in the Resistance," and it's got the little Rebel sticker um, symbol uh, symbol there. Thought it was super cool, and then she had this whole table, of course, with Star Wars inspired. Uh, yarn and, and things they do a star wars club so wait till you see you probably saw some of the bag i showed a little bit of the bag i can't even tell you cannot even tell you um i'm not let's just do this i kind of went a little um a little backwards okay that's mine this is mine and these are did you not get anything from here is it no. all me yes I actually feel like I was quite reserved this weekend. You did weekend. great, kiddo. This I bought. Did I just take those back? No. Okay. So, let's start with this. Oops. Yeah, I think I did fairly well. You did great. You yeah, did. I actually, you didn't buy much I more. didn't do bad. It's the bag that just makes everything look yes. just... Okay. Okay, so the first thing that I saw was um, Episode 4, A New Hope colorway, inspired by um, by Star Wars Episode 4. The reason why I also got this was because the night before, for May the 4th, Kevin and I ended up watching Episode 4, yeah. um, the movie. So I this colorway is absolutely gorgeous. It's Fangirl Fibers, 80% Merino, 20% Nylon, fingering weight, 400 yards, 100 grams, and then a little contrast or coordinating mini. Also on the table, I love this. Um, this one is Let the Wookiee Win. So it's based on Chewbacca. Same movie. Same movie. Quote from the same movie. So I got those. And... Then I saw these um, needle stoppers, which were super cool. 
I love Superman. It's one of my, like, he's one of my favorite superheroes. Um, so I got those Superman needle stoppers. So they'll sit right on the end of your needles there. I actually have one of my, my tattoos is um, the Superman logo um, with the RN inside of it. So I got that. And then we love pumpkin everything. So then they had these pumpkins, like pumpkin latte needle stoppers, which I thought were super cool. So we, I, I guess I bought all of this stuff. I bought one thing. Oh, you there. did. So I got the Star Wars stitch markers, which are so cute. Love it. Yeah. And I, so this one I loved because it's, you know, this is, I would say a new hope as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. And they're pretty accurate. Mm hmm pictures of the characters yeah so i got those they did a good job so then they were like do you want a bag and we said no thanks we have our yarn centric bags and then i think it was her husband it may maybe he goes oh are you sure i was like nope i'll take that bag thank you so much look at this freaking bag it's sparkly um that plastic vinyl vinyl thanks so much you're welcome and it says in my defense i was left unsupervised and the yarn store was open how fun is that so of course i said yep i'll take the bag so i did i love it um so that was at that was there that was at fangirl fibers so emily yeah, they have, again, a beautiful booth. Beautiful booth. I was very into this. We were obviously very into the whole Star Wars superhero thing, thing there. Oh, Die Alchemist and Yarn Jedi. I love it. I didn't notice that. Okay. Thanks. So that was there. That. And then, and again, it's just there's so many vendors, and they were beautiful. Um, one of the ones that we went to is a local to us is plies and hellhound mm -hmm. her name is gabby she is actually the very first she's so cool um trunk show that we ever experienced at knit new haven back in 2019 in like october or november because it was their an like anniversary of opening okay that's where you got your first say, how do you know the month it was the time of year I remember you and I wearing shawls, I believe. And I remember a gentleman wearing a sweater mm -hmm. there. So it was a cooler month. And it is where you purchased your first Indie Dye Jarn from, I yes. believe, from their booth. You That was my very first Sockhead Slouch hat. It is. With her, her yarn. Coradale base. Mm -hmm. So I picked up the... Um, a BFL in Neps. It's so good. Base. Um, this is so it's eighty five percent superwash BFL, fifteen percent Neps, hundred grams, four hundred and thirty eight yards. This is fingering weight, and I don't know which one's the base and which one's the colorway. Rex area maybe the colorway. Colorway and the base is Aaron, Aaron, yeah. right? Maybe. Either way, it's beautiful. It's this golden yellow, and it has some Tweety bits in it. And look at Tweety that bits. nice little bit of orange there. So this might actually be a good sock head. It would be. Yeah, it could be. What did you get? I thought you had a purpose for that. Just, no, just I just love. loved this. And I thought yeah. maybe I had another skein of the tweet in my stash. She but, has a really cool uh, Paulworth base. She that had, was really interesting. She has some really unique bases. Yeah. Um, I was very tempted to get a sweater's quantity of that just to have it, but I, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it because with, I have so many things that I want to cast on, and I have so like sweaters quantities for specific sweaters that I haven't even touched. Touched. Started, so right. I didn't. I just there's always there's always tomorrow. Um. So that was Boy that. Dreams to come we all, true. you know, we stopped at every booth. One booth that we stopped at that we did not make a purchase from because she was pretty much sold out by the time we got there. Um, is we got to meet Shayla from Black Pearl Magic. She's divine. She makes the, you know, the vinyl 
bags that are sparkly and glittery. We do have one. I think we have two on pre-order. Do we? Did we commit to that? I'm not I sure. Thought, I don't remember. I thought we did. Uh, we should reach out. We should probably reach but out to our friends at Yarnia. I know. We think we bought pre-ordered some. We didn't buy anything yet from them, I don't think. Did we? While we were at Yarnia, we did. No, I know that, but the, I thought the we bags. Were. Did we? I don't remember. I really don't remember, but I thought we did. This is so um, bad. Hold on. We have a problem. I was asking, where the hell am I going? I'm trying to see. I know that we took a picture with her. Yeah, I have all the pictures on my phone. Well, feel, feel free to show. <laughs> I didn't free, know what you were doing. Feel free to keep up with the story. I am. I was very entranced by your story. You did a great job. So so her husband be, was the photographer. He was. And um, he snapped some selfies of himself. You might have seen these on Instagram already. He was a cool guy. Yep. Um, oh, look. This is us with Aquila. Yay. Oh, yeah, there's my shirt. Millennium Falcon. Wait, what shirt is she wearing? Oh, an the Earl, Earl shirt. shirt. Oh, I didn't notice that. Very cute. There's Kevin. Um, looks. Look at his face. Cranking. <gasps> He's like, ooh. Um, and then... There she is. Here we are with Shayla. Um, yeah, she was pretty much sold out. Yeah. Um, we had a great conversation. Yeah, we, we just chatted. got to chat with her for a couple minutes. Oh, it was so, it was really, really Her so and her nice. husband, they're super nice people. Yeah. It was great, really, really cool to meet them mm-hmm. um, and have a good chat. So, hello, Shayla. And I was so happy for her. Like, she, you know, she had a great show. She sold yeah. out of a lot of things. But we saw people who who purchased some of the stuff yeah, from her. As she we had were... these, like cases needle cases or whatever yeah she has needle cases i originally saw them on the grocery girls jody bought them so they are vinyl and they're zipper and if i'm not mistaken they have like some pouches in it too um but they're see-through so you can see into them yeah look they look really cool i'm really proud uh, happy that everybody had gotten what they wanted and then one of the boots we were walking around and there was a skein of yarn i literally turned and i was like whoa yeah and we stopped. So we stopped at Fiber Seed. So this is Fiber Seed. Now we saw these, we saw them at... I know we've seen them before and I, I don't know where. I'm pretty sure they were in New York. New York. At, yeah, at, at Vogue? Um, Vogue. Okay, maybe. I'm pretty sure. I'm not I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. So we saw this skein that Ray purchased. And it was just like bright and beautiful and happy. So it brought us into the booth. And then we saw this pattern um, while we were in the booth. It is called the Depth Cow by Talitha Kuami. Okay, great. Um, and Oh, that's a cool picture. Yeah, that shows. So here it is. And this... Here's another version of it so you can kind of see. And this, the way that this yarn is dyed and knit up in that pattern, it gives that effect. So this is the... It's like planned pooling. Kind of. Yeah. So kind she of. was mess- She was telling us she was messing around with planned pooling and seeing how this skein would work. Yep. So this is called Balsam Range. And this is on their sprout fingering. And it is 510 yards. It is almost five ounces, 136 grams. So green is actually one of my other favorite colors. Mm -hmm. I think my first two cars were green, were they not? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Your Dodge Shadow wasn't green, was it? It was. My Dodge and then my Cavalier were both I know green. your Cavalier was. And then my Mazda and my... Oh, there's a black. Nissan no, you... were black. And now I have silver. So yeah, so I got this specifically for this pattern. And I just got the yarn because it was glorious. Um, this yarn is so freaking pretty and happy. I just don't... It's so bright, So I, probably, I might do the same thing, but it's just going to be super bright. Ready? I don't even know if it's, it's not coming doing across it. as bright on here yeah, as it is in person. Absolutely it's stunning. Just stunning. Yeah. I it's loved it. It's called Tropical Vibes. It was new. Very new. Yeah. Um, 
and it it just it brought us into the I was gonna say into the beach into the the booth and it's just it's so cool it looks like a toucan almost yeah and what's really fun is that this space um it's is special, exclusive, exclusive to yeah. the fiber seed it's american yeah. made um yeah. it's made in the u.s and blanchester ohio yeah and I just think it's again, it's I think it's beautiful. Me too. Um, and I've really actually, I, it's so soft. Yeah, look and, at like you can see like how it gl- like shines right there. Yeah, Lindsay is the owner and dyer behind yeah. it, and she just had a, again a be- nobody had a bad booth. All no, the booths they were are all beautiful. beautiful. Um, there was but, another place I wanted to go, and like there were some bags there. Um, well, speaking of that, that transitions really well into my next purchase. So you guys know I love foxes. What have... does a fox say? Ding, 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 ding. Um, so there was a booth, and she had beautiful bags. And I actually thought they were all incredibly oh, reasonably were... priced. Yeah. Priced really well. So this was Tanny Casey. And I saw this bag. I was going to walk away, guys. I almost did. And you I definitely did. did. I think I did, and I went back. Yeah. So, good. so another tote. It's but like it's a round, a round bottom. bottom. Yeah. Round bottom tote. Oval or whatever. Canvas. <laughs> leather handles. Two pockets on the inside. It's so well made. And it has foxes. And they're fun, different colors. And I loved it. And I, I love it. the little whiskers. I know. I just thought it was so, so nice. It's perfect. So. Perfect. This will be a good sweater bag. Sweater Speaking of, let's just do that now. Now we can start using the stuff that we bought. All right. And I think that was our yarn centric. Um, yeah, that experience. was yarn centric. I mean, we met more people. I just, you know. It, I know. I, I just. It's so, so many. Yeah. And it's so great. It's like, it's overwhelming. Uh, but in a good way. Yeah. You know? It it was lovely. We were there for like a good hour and a half, I want to say. I think we left around three. Yeah, because we still needed to get to the hotel. Like, I know. We didn't even know. We hadn't even checked in yet. Right. So <clears throat> so our hotel was in Gaithersburg. Yes. Maryland, um, which wasn't too far, if I remember correctly, from Yarn Centric and Magpie. Maybe like 20 minutes. 25 minutes or something like something that. Something like that. So we it went... It was in the, like on the Rio, in the Rio area. It was on yeah. this beautiful like little um, river waterway. Um, with, there was like a fountain in the middle. Like there, were, we put our, yeah. we put some pictures on Instagram. Here's the picture from our room. We had one of the rooms. We got a, a room with a balcony. And yes. there were only... Two rooms on that side of the building on each floor that had the balcony. So we were really lucky to be able to get that. Yeah. Um, so we went there. And by this time of day, we had not eaten anything but like five munchkins. Correct. We were starving. Oh, my gosh. Because that morning, I ended up getting an apple fritter. We stopped at Dunkin' Donuts. That's right. I ended up getting an apple fritter. And the freaking thing was raw. Yeah, that's right. And I didn't notice it till we were already on the highway. So I didn't. I didn't eat that. Yeah. So yeah, we had a few munchkins. So we had a few munchkins. So what we did is we got to the hotel, we checked in, we went out, we grabbed a pizza really quick, but we had dinner plans. So we didn't want to overeat. So we, which actually worked out really well. Um, the hotel we stayed at, everything was right there. Oh, there were so, so many much. restaurants, so yeah. many food places and little shops. So um, then we went back, we hung out at the hotel and we went out to dinner um, within a two minute walk. At a, I forget the name of the place. With... How convenient to be able to just like leave your hotel, walk, not even a block. It right. wasn't even like two minute walk. No, it was then, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we got together with Kim and Jana of Knit Together with Kim and Jana and their husbands for dinner that evening. Um, it was Copper Something Grill. And so that was May 5th. So of course we had margaritas. Cinco de Mayo. It was just really lovely to hang out with them because they, again, are, um, you know, we got to hang out with them some at Pick Up Every Stitch the weekend before, but we haven't, um, like, sat down and had, like, yeah. dinner with them and got to chat with them extensively. So it was really nice to get to hang out with them and hang out with their husbands. We had met um, Jonna's husband previously at Pick Up, you, mm, yeah, Pick Up Every Stitch. I'm pretty sure. I, Were you there? Yes, that the was first, the time that we, that like, the randomly time. ran into Max yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so 
Dinner was fantastic. Dinner was so good. It, it was really nice. It was on the water. They had the windows open. And then they had, once it started getting cooler, they had all, their lights were heated lights. So they turned on the lights and the heating. So it was very, very nice. Um, we had some ribs and French fries and two drinks. They let us do, instead of coleslaw, get a double order of French fries. I know. That was fantastic. Like, Is there even a question? Absolutely not. And they were like shoestring fries? They were crispy. So good. Oh, I'm so hungry right now. I know. I'm sorry. And we did eat today. So that's... We at did. least we're there. We did that. So, yeah. So we did dinner with them. Hung out there for of a couple margaritas. hours. No, one margarita. Oh, you had two margaritas. Mm-hmm. I had a Jack and Coke at, or Jack and Ginger afterwards. And then we Our bartender up. had a very heavy pour. They sure the hell did. Like, either that or we were just so tired and like... Barely ate that I... Depleted? Woke up on Saturday and I was like, I... Even before we woke up, I put my head to the pillow and I'm like... What? I know you said you were a little tipsy just dizzy. walking back yeah. to the hotel. I was not, but when I woke up in the morning, I thought, "Am I drunk? <laughs> Is that possible?" I only had two beverages. Oh, so it have. So Saturday was the we day we weren't driving. Yeah, Saturday was the day. First day of Maryland Sheep and Wool. So we stopped and we got breakfast nearby at yeah. Silver Diner. We had tried to plan like, okay, we don't. We don't think we need to get there as soon as the gates open. Like we could probably get there like between like nine and ten would be a good, you know, a good time. We weren't sure what to expect either, like size, like how big it was, uh, how big it was, like how much time it would take for us to get through it, and right. you know, like whatever. And we were kind of using our experience from Rhinebeck, right? And so we thought, okay. It gets very busy first mm-hmm. thing. Plus, we knew that we also had dinner plans Saturday night. In the area. At 5. <clears throat> so we knew That's that we smart. wanted to yes. stay. We wanted to stay there like a longer period of time. Um, right. So that we can leave right from there and go to dinner. Yeah, because our hotel, unfortunately, was a little bit further away from yeah. Maryland Sheep and Wool than we initially thought. So yeah. It was about we, 45 minutes away. Yeah, about a 45 minute drive from our hotel to the fairgrounds. Yeah. So we had planned out that instead of driving back to the hotel and then going to dinner, where we were going for dinner was 15 minutes east of the fairgrounds. Yes. So it made sense to stay there. So we wanted to stay there as long as possible. So it made sense for us to go later in the day. Right. Or later in the morning. Um, Because we we knew we were going to spend hours there anyway. Right. So, um, yeah, so we had breakfast. Breakfast was really nice. Yep. Breakfast was great. Our Again, waiter was very um, social and friendly. And it was right outside the hotel. Yeah. Again, we didn't even leave the street. It was nope. a one-minute walk from the hotel. Stopped, got breakfast. I got a Lumberjack special I thought about you all. Oh, you did? I did. Um, it remind. Yeah, that's kind of like the All-American Slam from Denny's. Yeah, is it what was you like got. pancake, sausage. Bacon. Bacon. Eggs. Home fries. And then I ordered, I ordered a, si- a biscuit, a biscuit. On side. Um, yeah, so then we went to Maryland Sheep and Wool and we were stuck in traffic for 45 minutes waiting to turn down the street we to the we fairgrounds. Were, we like were if a half a mile away, um, yeah. is when traffic started. We've already gotten off of any highways that we were supposed to be on. It was just that one turn in there, and honestly, like we were waiting there for an hour. Um, yeah, 45, I think 45 minutes, and it was not. The most pleasant experience because people were cutting people off. Yeah, I was very disappointed. I was very disappointed um, in in, every, in people's behaviors, <laughs> because like we were honestly like you know you get you get there like you put in your time like you know you're gonna stay right. in line like you, I'm, we're in line we've been in line for whatever and then you have these schmucks that are coming up, and they're like literally right, literally cutting to you the off. front to the front of the line and then like, getting back out and cutting off the next person and it's yeah. just like and that happened multiple times by multiple different people and I'm just like. I'm very disappointed in this community. <laughs> I was, I think I was, right. I was probably getting a little cranky because I was driving. Yeah, he was not. That's the only other time you drove. And he, it's probably the last freaking time that I drove. Yeah, I was and like, he was not happy. I was just like, hey, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Like, But you put I'm, in your time. I know. But you know, I'm, get in the back of the line. <laughs> we're put in your time. We're, we're all headed to the same place. Th- and this is why. And I, t- I saw the lady that cut us off. I typically I was drive. this close to saying something to her. And this is why I typically drive. I don't get road rage or anything like that where I'm going to start yelling at people. I yell at my, like I'll yell Yell not loud enough for them to hear, but like just so that I can get it out of my system. (laughs) But I just thought this woman acted, you know, 
very poorly. Okay. So, so then we park and, and scene. We walk into Maryland Sheep and Wool, and I personally, and I don't know, we parked in a second parking lot across yeah. the street because the other parking lot was full. in. Talk about the worker who works hard or works smart. Oh my not god, harder. it was so. So you know how they have the funny. people with the flags just waving you, telling you where to go. Like One of this them way. is just laying on the ground on their phone and like. Yeah, they just had their flag going like this. Everybody else standing up. I was like, look, work um, smarter, not yeah. harder. So um, it was actually really nice because they do have shuttles that could take yeah. you there. It's not too long of a walk, but no, um, but we wanted I to understand get the steps. why people would need um, sure. or would like to take the shuttle instead. So they do have a shuttle. We walked over, um, walked into the gate. There was no line to get in at that point, which is, I think, some of the reason we waited to like to avoid lines. Sure. Well, we didn't but think traffic. Holy cow. The amount of people. Yeah, I I would say it reminds me of Rhinebeck on Sunday this past year. Yeah. Um, not the first year we went to Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck this past Sunday still had a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe there were more than that. Um, but it had that feel. It had that more relaxed vibe than Rhinebeck on Saturday. Totally. It had the Sunday. But there um, were feel people. To there were a ton. There a were. A ton of people. Um, it didn't take as long to get food. No, we actually ate. So one of the things that we promised, we had to like keep promising ourselves is because we didn't have our caregivers with us, the AKA knitting. the knitting posse. I know. We had to feed ourselves <laughs> and and remind ourselves when it was time to eat and drink. Yeah, because you can get caught up in everything that's going on and forget. And we are really bad with that. Plus we're Even... very social at these places. Like we just want to keep talking to people and like seeing everybody and all that stuff. So we forget. But we're also the same way at home sometimes where it's like, oh, it's lunchtime. Oh, we didn't have breakfast or whatever the case is. We're not always the best with that. So we really had to make an effort. So we got, um, we stopped for food twice. We got. We did. Just some fries with cheese. Because we also didn't want to overeat because we knew we were going for dinner that night. So we got some fries with cheese and we did have a big breakfast. So we were good. And then we went back and we wanted to get some lemonade. And the place we got lemon aid from had fried Oreos. So we got those, a small serving, and God. those were delish. They were so good. Like, they literally battered an Oreo cookie in, like, a pancake batter and mm. deep fried it. I wouldn't say pancake. It was more cakey. It wasn't as... In a cake batter, and it was delicious. So anyway, we um, we we met a, a ton of people. We saw a lot of... Of familiar faces. Uh, yeah. And... Oh, one of the first groups that we saw, though, is Angel. We ran into Aquila, Angel, Kim, Well, Johnny so Bo. Aquila, like, they're smart, right? They, there were a lot of, um, different than, like, Rhinebeck, there were a lot of grassy areas and, like, spots where people can, like, put down, you know, and sit for a little bit and stuff. And camp out, kind of. Yeah. And hang out for So she day. had a pop-up tent which was really cool and some blankets. And she told us that um, we're welcome to kind of like touch base. Yes. Which was really, really great. Um, so yeah. I think that's like one of the first groups that we met. So it's set up kind of similarly to Rhinebeck in a weird way. They have your barns with the animals and some vendors, the smaller ones like Rhinebeck does. And then unlike like Rhinebeck has the other barns, we'll say the buildings. Mm-hmm. So A, B, C, D and E is I think how they are. And at Maryland Sheep and Wool, there's the main exhibit center, which is the main building. And it's a little bit larger than the buildings at Yeah, it was, it was that like. way. I thought so, too. Um, and what was really nice is that I didn't feel, except for the small barns, I didn't feel cramped in that one. I felt like there was plenty of space to walk around and check out the booths. Um, you know, you, you have your popular vendors who are really hard to get into, like Ms. Babs, or um, I think we walk bare naked wolves was hard to get into oh yeah it was really hard to get into. um so we just kind of did you know did our rounds and said hi to people um like i said one of the first groups was aquila johnny bow angel from scrappy angel mm-hmm. um kim who has a podcast sweet pea sweet and, Chick- and chickadee who um her daughter makes an appearance with her uh sometimes and then rachel who's a designer i don't remember what she is on Instagram. Um, she is Pearl. Mm-hmm. So it was just nice to run into them. It sure was. You know, again, we. I think who took the – Johnny Bo took the picture. Do you, I don't know if I have it. No, I think it's on his Instagram. 
Raging Pearl Wind. Raging Pearl Wind. Um, so yeah, so we we walked around a lot before we made any purchases. Uh, a lot of vendors that we were, were familiar with and that we saw. So I think. Do we want to go over our buys? No, but but buys. Yes. Okay. So we, I didn't get. We didn't get much. Oh, I got a few things. <laughs> So, um, one of, so we didn't like, again, you know, we didn't have a big, huge plan as to like, we need to, to get this. We need to get that. One of my plans was to visit my friends over at going gnome. Um, they do a specialty gnome for these types of events. So for Rhinebeck and Maryland, and I think they did one for, um, Vogue. Thanks. They, um, they do a specialty like gnome. So we, I, I went to go visit them and immediately grabbed the special Maryland gnome needle felting kit. You guys know how I feel about the needle felting. Oh, I didn't notice there was a little it's baby a little lamb. It's a little friggin' lamb, which is sheep. so cute. Adorable. Um, I know. And then I needed another um, pad, foam pad, because we, we had given ours away during a, a giveaway. Yes. So I wanted to get another one. And um, I saw this, and I, um, at first, from a distance, I was like, look at that cute little baby cow. It's not a baby cow. It's a cute little Jacob lamb. His name is Little Moo. He's adorable. Do we look have... at him. Did I take pictures of the real Jacob? Little Moo. I think you got a, a Jacob. Yeah, look at And that's what they that's... look like as adults. Yeah, so they do have the spots on their bodies and stuff like that. How cute is that? You see those little horns? So I thought these were really adorable. Um, I also signed up for their mystery, um, their mystery club for this year, which is like an under the sea mystery sea creatures. Okay, which is super cool. So yeah, um, and then my first purchase was I stopped at the Kelborn Woolens booth because I do really love their yarn, and I got some more camper to make the. Colorwork gloves that I did previously because I love them so much. If yeah. not that pattern, definitely another colorwork pattern. Like a cell and, mitten style. Yeah, and I wanted to get some colors that aren't typically me. Yeah. Um. So I, even though I just showed a lot of yellow and green, but, these are these are this is the new you. Um. So I thought these would be really cute, and I really can't say enough about how much I loved working I with know. this previously and the price yeah. point. Nine dollars a skein. They're fifty gram skeins, but nine dollars a skein. And it's beautiful. And it is hundred percent wool, two hundred yards, fifty grams. Um, it is a super fine, it says. I just I loved working with it and I thought that it blocked beautifully. So mm -hmm. if I go with that colorway again or that pattern, I'm gonna use this as my main color That's and the yellow beautiful. as my yes. color work. Yeah. I think it would pop really nicely. Me too. Um, and then our next purchase so, was this. Yes. So we have, so you guys have probably seen these before. We got these at Rhinebeck um, this past year. This is the discovery of witches. Um, we have four, three, three of them. The um, other one says, so we have Weaver, you have Septor. The other one is Ma um, Matthew's Signet. Yeah. From his ring. Yeah. So this is by uh, Polly Studio. Studios. We saw that she was going to be there. And knew immediately that we had to go back. And yeah. it was really, really difficult um, making a decision on what to buy it from her. It absolutely was. Because not only was it like coffee mugs, she had so many different like cool things like yarn bowls. And um, there were some like cooking things. like uh, cooking Colanders. Things? Colanders. <laughs> cooking things. Um, I will be buying at least one mug from Ryan Beck when we go. Yes. Um, but, so we each got a new mug. And we stayed with the Star Wars theme yes. this time around. So this... We saw this one first. Yes. I think. And yeah. this one says, that's no moon, it's my yarn stash. And so it's the um, the Death Star with knitting needle needles through it in the shape, like in like a yarn ball. I yeah. thought it was so clever. In this one, what I love about this, so yeah. this is the Rebel sign, but... It starts breaking off into all the ships. Yes. And led by the Millennium Falcon. So I thought that was really freaking nice. And I think these are pretty reasonably priced for a hand 
hand-thrown. I agree. I'm assuming they're hand Actually, you know what? I wonder if they're hand-thrown or if they're poured. It doesn't matter. Either way, I still think they're reasonably priced. And um, the color of this one, I thought, was Me too. That color so is great. Gorgeous. Yeah. 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 Like... They're and so comfortable to drink out of, too. They have a really long, like large yeah. um, handle. They're, they are handling. And it fits a lot. I think it these does. are 20 ounce, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little bit larger. But um, you can fit a lot of a beverage in here. And that color is perfect. They're it's dishwasher gorgeous. safe, so yeah. they go right in the dishwasher. And I just really love them. Uh, some of, And there are a bunch, actually, a bunch of ceramic artists there. And there were there were a few of them. price wise i just thought that this poly studios is just so reasonably priced Me compared too. to some of the other ones yeah. and they have a great fandom collection mm -hmm. of stuff and then i'll take this one out of the box too yeah it's good it's really good okay and then the last place we bought stuff from was a purchase because we can never, we haven't been able to make purchases from this vendor at Rhinebeck. Their yeah. stuff pr goes pretty quickly. So I thought it was a good opportunity and we, neither one of us can make a decision. So we each got two. Right. So we stopped at Matterroot. We broke the bank here. I mean, look, they're, the quality, the quality of, of, of their bags is amazing. Um, so it's definitely, they're pricey. They are. They are pricey. Just but we know people who have them. Yes. Who love them. Yes. And have we had them for a number of years. So we decided to break the bank and buy some. So I got my the first one is and they're good size, right? Here's so what I found. Do you want to say where they're from? I said matter. You did? I yes, I did. Thank you so much though for making sure I clarified that information. You're welcome. You are welcome out there if you So yeah, so we stopped at time. again matter root. And these are canvas bottoms, wax canvas bottoms, it feels like. I thought this fabric was fantastic. And then what really sold me was the interior fabric on this yeah. one. Again, I'm going through a yellow phase. So these have some honeycombs and bees on the inside. And the bag has a nice deep pocket in, on the interior. And then these are roll top bags if you haven't seen them before. So you roll them. And then it has these clasps. Oops. I think this is the way. This, this is, is the way. way. And then you just buckle and it's good to go. I think that's right. Probably not. Maybe it was the other way. But that's the, the purpose of this. I probably did it wrong. It's okay. Other directions inside? This was actually my second choice. My first choice was this one. Mine? No, this one. Oh. No, I love yours. Go ahead. Me too. This is the one that I got. That was your first choice. This was my first choice. It's got the little like frond inside there. Yeah. The fern or whatever. I just, I absolutely love this um, so much. I love the colors, everything about it. Yeah. Again, the wax canvas bottom. They're so well made. Um, you can really tell there's pockets on the inside, one pocket on the inside. So good. Oh, okay. So these are cut, printed, and sewn in Maine. They are crafted using quality, organic, and eco-friendly materials to make a product you love. 1% of profits to Mofka. I'm going to have to Google that and see what it is. But you know, you did it right because then you just it clasps like that and it stays closed. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. While he's looking that up. So it is Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association. Oh, fun. So my second one that I got from there is this one. Again, same oh, the, the colors. canvas. Yeah, your colors. Really are color beautiful. theme. Yeah. But this one had the same fern inside, but in yellow. So, yeah. I just, the quality of the, mm -hmm. like I really can't say enough. I just thought that they're really, they're just beautiful. They have t-shirts. Yeah. Also, um, a, a really beautiful booth. And like I said, when we go to Ryan, the two years we've been to Rhinebeck, I think we go to their booth, it's swarmed and then they sell out incredibly fast. Yeah. 
Um, so the the second bag that I got is not the tweed bag uh, with the canvas bottom. It's they're very simple. I love. This. It's so damn cute. It's so cute with the sheep on it. Yeah. They had some really cool T-shirts. I know, but like they, very simple and like they had sold out a uh, or yeah. had sold a lot of stuff yeah. too. It, um, so this is just a simple bag. There's no pocket inside or anything like that. No additional you know lining. Just a simple bag. It's thick though. It's it, the quality is still is still very much there, and it's, it is a box bottom. But um, yeah, I thought this was really cute. Yeah. Um, and then. We got to hang out with Aquila and um, Johnny Bo and their friends quite a lot. Oh, wait. So I, we're all over the place. That's okay. So we, we were so organized. We also ran into um, Hope. Our new BFFs. Hope and Keisha. Hi, guys. Um, they have a podcast also. And their, and their friend was with them as well. So Hope and Keisha have the podcast. It's the Pine Baron podcast. So Hope is here, and this is Keisha there. Um, and we had watched their mm. podcast like two weeks ago. Ow. Um, oh. What happened? My back. Um, yeah, so we had seen that they were going or heard that they were going, so we were looking forward to running into them. Mm -hmm. So we um, got to run into them while they were getting food. So we chatted with them for a couple of minutes. So it was nice to meet them. It so was, and like we all we gave hugs and like yeah. could have just chatted forever. It got hot. It got very hot. Like it was like eighty sun, something that yeah. day. It was very warm. I I was nervous that we were gonna get sunburned pretty bad on our necks. I know. Stuff. I'm surprised we didn't. We Me did not too. wear any knits there because it was so hot. Oh yeah. And we knew it was going to be. It was shorts, t-shirt. Yeah. And no. But one of the good things this year was that there was no mud. There was Correct. none of that. Um. So we, you know, we got away with wearing sneakers. We did bring our boots just in case because of, of, of all the past years. Right. Um, we really did meet just so many people. And I, I really wish that we, we could, could remember, remember everybody and, and give a shout out to everybody. But it was such a, such a cool event. Um, oh, I gotta but what I was going to say before I got all sidetracked is that we hung out at Aquila and Johnny Bo's um, tent area quite a bit. And... That was another, that was probably one of my favorite parts is yeah. because we met them briefly, right? We got to say hi and chat very briefly when we were in Rhinebeck um, last year. But this time we actually got to spend time with them and really talk. Um, and just, so be, it was, just, you know? it, so that was really, you know, so that was really nice. Um, you know, we ran into some of the people that we saw at Magpie or Yarn Centric there as well. Uh, and I wish I could remember her name, and I know it on Instagram. Um, remember what's her name? And we ran into her at all three places. And like when we were at Maryland Sheep and Wool, we ran into her like four times. And finally, by then, we were just like, "Hey, friend, how are you?" Oh man, I know it. I'll be able to find it. Um, probably so, once I see her face. I know. I feel like that happened with quite a few people. And like to Kevin's point earlier, like when we were talking about this, is that you do see the same. You know, the same faces and the same people at the different events and even at the same event just multiple times and you just can't help but like say like, you know, smile and say, Hey friend and like feel, you know, I don't know, super cool. And then we got to see I um Scott and Jay. <gasps> yes. Which we did not take a picture of them and I it's funny. No. They sent us a message after the fact and I was like, you know what? We said the same freaking thing walking to the car that we forgot to get yeah. a picture with them. And we forget to take a picture with like everybody. It was really lovely. Um, again, it was just really, really lovely. And uh, I don't was, know. Yeah, it was. So my only suggestion is for uh, any of the food vendors out there to please keep forks at your um, available to your customers. So we got those cheese fries that Kevin was saying, and they used like the. Sauce. melty liquid like, cheese sauce cheese which was delicious like, absolutely everything was delicious you can't go wrong with cheese and, and fries but they didn't give us forks and so like i left a good portion of Me the too. fries i don't let that's kind of gross i didn't want to touch else. it all with my fingers um and i couldn't find her it was but too i hope she remembers because i just remember seeing her a bunch of times and finally i was just the last couple of times i was just like hey friend how are you and i love that that was in the main building so we left probably around 4.30 because we knew we had to get gas. We had to get money. 
stuff like that. So we um, we got iced coffee because we hadn't had another coffee that day. And then we were... Did we get iced coffee at We the... did at Duncan. Because we stopped oh, at the gas yeah, station. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the way out from at the end of like that True. area, there was a little shopping center that had the gas station, ATM, and the uh, Duncan. So we stopped there. Oh my gosh. I forgot. We met our um, Bags by Carol. Oh, yes. Who ended up printing out a picture that she took with us and brought us everywhere that her and her friends went. So she would tag us at, like, having pizza. Right, having pizza with (laughs) needles at the ready, and then they would have a picture of us in, like, a picture frame. And then, like, we went to knit night with them one night, you know. Yeah. It was cute. It was funny. It was just really cute. Um, I just love everybody. And what was really fun Saturday night is um, our friend Sue and her sister. Sally. Sally invited us to dinner along with some of their friends and they live in maryland pretty close it was just 15 minutes kind of where we were east from where we were ellis ellicott 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 city City. um so we went over there for dinner for five and we got to hang out there i think we were there till almost like nine oh my gosh i could have stayed the whole yeah we could have stayed and chatted and they were so gracious and had lasagna and some apps that were a baguette <gasps> with apricot jam and prosciutto. Nope. Fontanella cheese. Fontanella cheese and prosciutto. It was was delicious. I could that could have been my entire meal. I want some Yeah, meal. I probably could have eaten the whole tray and been fine with it. But then they were really kind and made three different lasagnas to accommodate anybody's food preferences. Um you know, we had homemade some beer, bread. homemade bread, cookies, sent us home with cookies it was just a really lovely time so we um got to hang out with the two of them and that's where we did the most of our knitting yes we sat on her deck outside her patio yep outside drank yeah some beverages and knit and talked and shared we actually did this whole thing with them pretty much yeah we shared all of our acquisitions yeah ray really wanted to he was really about i like show and tell so ray really wanted to have a show i'm that person that like when there's a group like, you guys want to play a game? He like, wants... let's play a game. Yeah, all the time. Like, and he'll mention it until people are like, okay, let's just play a game. Just to shut he me will, up. He will do it for three hours straight. Do you guys, are, do you guys want to play a game? Who's about, ready Who's ready to play a game? How about that game? Um, oh, look, there's, you guys, there's our friend. Yep, do you want to play? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't remember her name, but we met her. We came... Oh, what's her name? We saw her at... Magpie, and then Maryland, Sheep and Wool. I don't think we saw her at Yarn Centric, if I'm not mistaken. So at dinner, anyway, at anyway. dinner, um, again, um, Angel from Scrappy Angel was there, um, and her daughter-in-law, whose name escapes me at the moment, and then Kim from Sweet Pea and Chickadee, and she told us about her beautiful splurge, which we will not mention so that it doesn't get ruined on her podcast. Nope. Um, but we know a secret. And then also Rebecca. So when we met Rebecca um, McKenzie, we just shared that she's, I can't remember what we just said. She, so she is a, I'm going to designer. So a designer. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So she has this um, cardigan that she was wearing, the stepping stones cardigan, which is a pattern of her own, um, her own design. And, she had me put it on. I, yes. Do I not sh- have the picture? You, I swore you showed it to me. Unless, sit, um, check your text messages. Maybe Angel sent it to you. Maybe. Because I think Angel sent the took the picture. Oh, yeah. Man, it's like a steel trap up here sometimes. Okay. So, um, I th- I want to knit this cardigan. I think it looks good on me. So this is the stepping stones cardigan, and there's a little lace detail at, yes. detail at the bottom. Does and it the show? sides? So that's the the sides there. Yep, and at the bottom, and it's like a garter stitch ribbing or something. So this was hers. She, you know, and I, we were just like, I was like, oh, I want to wear that. So I want the I'm I'm gonna knit this in the same like size and everything. But we'll have the pattern linked down below. You have heard um, that. Yep. It's the Stepping Stones cardigan pattern um, on Ravelry. It's a $9 pattern. 
And that's her. That's her. She's cute. Yep. It was really, it was so much fun. Yeah. It, it really was. And um, what's cool about those um, types of gatherings is that there's so many different conversations going on. And yeah. you can just kind of pick up and, and it's fun when you're with like-minded people. Mm-hmm. Um, and even with us, like a lot, most of the time, like we're, we, we're together. Right. But there are, it's funny because when we're driving home from someplace or we're on our walk and we're just talking about stuff, we realize that we've each had separate conversations. Yes. So it's like, oh, remember when so-and-so said this? And another one's like, no. no. I wasn't there for that. Um, and so two things that we forgot to mention about Maryland Sheep and Wool itself. I'm probably a lot more than that. Absolutely. But somebody else that we ran to who we love is Tashi <gasps> of Tashi. Tangles I, and Starlight. So I feel like I screwed Tashi up when she was doing her um, drop spindles. I, she literally like, dropped it a she, few times. So she has um, a YouTube channel as well, and she's a prolific spinner. She loves drop spindles. Um and every time I watch her, I want to buy I know, one. I'm in awe. And I'm I like, know. but I have a wheel that I haven't used. And she's like, you know how I feel about that. I was like, I, I know. I should. I'll do it. I'll start doing it 10, 10 to 15 minutes a day. I'll start spinning. But she's just a lovely human being. Yeah. Um, so, it, again, you know, just fantastic. And we this were. This is where I wish that we took pictures so that we can go back and see. Right. Um, and we were walking. And I don't remember oh. if it was me, if I sneezed or if she sneezed. But somebody sneezed, and I said, God bless you. She did, I think. And we said, bless and you. And we she her. turned around, and she said, thank you. She's like, oh, my God. And she stopped. She's like, and she gave us um, some yarn, koozies, condoms, whatever you want to call yes. it. Yes. So thank you very we much. We got the choose. And I wish that we got your name or contact information because, like. Wait, do I not? I have some. S- I'm just checking bags. Did. No, that's where we wanted to go back. Oh, well, we wanted to go back to this place, KM Bags. Yeah, that was at Yarn Centric, I believe. We did not. I think that's the and bag then, place I was talking about. I don't know about. where this came from. Do you? Uh, yep, I think that's from Going Gnome, I think. That's the baby. Oh, okay. That's him. They had a cute um, little sticker. But yeah, again, it. all of Saturday was lovely. Everybody is just so nice. I, I really, I love our community. Um, um the only thing we didn't get to do is there were these like old fashioned handmade brooms that I really freaking wanted, but we didn't have any cash on us and we were on our way out and we were pretty exhausted by the end of the day. So we did the dinner, went home, went back to the hotel. We got back about 10 o'clock and then we kind of just crashed and we made the decision yeah. to not go back on Sunday. Ray had some schoolwork he needed to finish on Sunday and we knew that the drive was going to take out a max We thought maybe at a minimum six hours. We were really concerned the later we stayed on a Sunday that we could run into some more traffic. So we just wanted to make, yeah, we wanted to make sure we got home at a decent hour. We, again, we didn't plan well. So we left at like eight in the morning and got home at two. Um, But it was the, again, I know, but at the start of our way home, we're like, wow, it's great. It's going to be like four and a half half hours hours. to get home. This is perfect. But again, we hit New York traffic and we had to go up. Traffic in New York was the worst. Yeah, it really was bad. Coming home, going over the bridge, George Washington Bridge. We got rerouted a few times. We ended up going over the Tappan Sea Bridge instead. Um, But again, it was a lovely trip. If we were to do it again, which I would, it wouldn't be an every year trip for us um because i mean if we flew it would be different but then we how do we take back I, I know we can't bring all this home with us so maybe if we like are not such pigs yarn pigs i know then or but... if we made a longer trip like a thursday through tuesday or something yes. where we had like drive because half-life. i like i would like to go back a second day and just like spend time um just like finding Being. a spot and hanging out yeah or whatever um, that was another thing too that we didn't do is we didn't have like a meetup or anything like they didn't they don't have it, like a podcasters meetup or right. a group of people meetup that I was aware of. Correct. Um, true. And we took advantage of that at Rhinebeck, the podcasters meetup at the Hill. And we're yeah. not the type that we're like, oh, come meet us at so and so's booth, you know, or whatever. But I think maybe maybe going forward we'll do some meetups. Yeah. At these we'll places. See. Yeah. Um, Just love to meet everybody. So yeah, that was pretty much the weekend, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean, we actually haven't been watching any TV. No, maybe we skip what we're reading and watching. Okay, we're at two hours and twenty minutes. Yeah, right? we'll talk about. Um, yeah, we'll we'll throw that in next yeah. week because so, we don't have. I mean, 
we've each finished a couple of books where we can always talk about that after. Yeah. So I think that is everything. It is Unless certainly you no. Like you want. I'm good because I'm starving. I so am so I think hungry. it's lunchtime. Same it's pretty things. late in the day for us. I have and we the tanks as well. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We will be back in two weeks after our trip to Knit City, Montreal. And then we're done for a little while. We're done until Rhinebeck. Okay. Yeah, no, we don't have anything planned after this Great. trip. We have nothing planned until October. So we hope that you guys have a fantastic two weeks and we will see you all in a fortnight. Bye. Bye.